Hello, friends, and welcome, my my compatriots, to another episode of D and D Candlekeep Mysteries. I'm back in the hot seat, in charge once again for this level fourteen adventure that we're gonna go on called the Scrivener's Tale. Uh, we're jumping around a bit in the book because uh, we don't we don't care if you need continuity or not. We don't. <laughs> so. Um, what so, is continuity? So everybody's got everybody's got new characters and new setups for for today. Ready to you know ready to uh, do uh, mischief, presumably, um, as this party often does. Um, yeah. I, first of all, my dear friends, how have you been? It's been two weeks since I've seen you. Also, we don't have Persephone today, so she's replaced by uh, by the. Uh, Monstrosity of the Deebs are Gulgarush in the image there. So, you know, <laughs> Just so noticed you that. Can, you can, <laughs> yeah, you can you can have that. Uh, we'll have and, her back next week. Yeah, and Persephone will be back next week. So we're just running we're running one short. Um, how have you been, my friends? This past two weeks that we haven't played D and D together. Uh, I hope everything's going good. Anybody done anything exciting or is going to do anything exciting that we need to hear about immediately? I've just been very, very busy with work. Just been my whole life. Just the nice and mundanity of a of a day job stuff is pretty much what I've been up to. I understand. I understand. But uh, keeping yeah. you keeping you busy, I guess. <laughs> I mean, yes, it's keeping me busy. It's keeping me paid. It's keeping me housed and uh, insured. So these are all thumbs up situations. Yeah, yeah they yeah. certainly are. Oh, I agree. Oh, uh, and I also went to the DMV last week and finally applied for my ID card. Ooh. And it's going to be the very first piece of legal uh, identification that I have that's going to have the non-binary gender marker nice. on it. Nice. I'm yes. very excited. That's hype. I'm hype. The first step about that. on a long journey of gender affirming stuff for me. And I'm excited to finally have at least that taken care of. I totally understand that. I, um... All my documents are still old legal name slash gender marker. So, you know, it's been that way for many years and I just haven't done anything about it. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my ID card will still have my dead name on it, but for now it is what it is. Yeah, I'm I'm just like I don't care what the government thinks of me. <laughs> <You're> like <laughs> Um How about you, Drac? Anything cool over the last two weeks? Anything any Ooh. any reportable news? Um, I mean, I'm adding to my list of actual plays that I'm going to be on starting tomorrow. Ooh, that's cool. Um, so that's pretty cool. I probably should start scheduling time to sleep, but you know, I I can I can procrastinate when it comes to that stuff. Um, you <laughs> so can I'm gonna sleep. Be on call you press. can sleep when you're dead. Right? Exactly. I am. I am. Death is I just am eternal a slumber. So I'm, I'm just saving concern. it up. Yeah. I am a concern. <laughs> no, I am just, one concern. You're just, you're just banking it. You know, you just keep exactly. I'm up. banking it for later. Yeah. Um, not not so how you, that works. So, so you said you said Cobalt Press. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna be on Cobalt Press tomorrow um, for a little mini campaign. We're gonna be playing in the Scarlet Citadel. Um, um, I guess supplement. I think is what it's called. Um, that's coming out. Like, I think it's coming on Kickstarter already, and we're just getting to play on play in it and showcase it. So I'm very excited for that. That's great. Um, yeah. Other than that, I'm just no more tons of games and a ton of seat where I can fit it. I respect that. Yeah. Throw it in wherever it goes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like uh, 3 p.m. Sleep time. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you know, I, I, I had on that before this game. Yeah. It was pretty okay. It wasn't long enough, but it was pretty okay. How about you, Dave? Anything anything cool the last two weeks? Um, I got my first thing on the board. Well, your arm well, stab. Uh, oh, okay. I was oh. like, what? The first, the first health stab. The first yeah. health stab. Me too, yeah. yeah. So that was pretty cool. Um, I've been playing through all the Mass Effects in the trilogy thing. On the Legendary Edition, yeah. Yeah, and it's... It's just kind of fascinating how they change, like the systems change and the gameplay changes between them, and how it's like a reflection of how the genre of uh, RPGs just kind of evolved. Um, yeah, but also it becomes how technology more evolved. Yeah, yeah, actually, it's it's weird. Um, 
there are parts where one and two look better than three because of the way they've remastered them. Um, and three hasn't really had any changes. Uh, and it's also had the most bugs by far. Got it. But it's, it's been really fun and it's really cool to see like did legit and, all the choices carrying on through all the things. That's did Andromeda cool. not end up in there? No. No. That's not part of the I think they want to think that Andromeda didn't exist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it didn't do super well for them. It wasn't super well received. So. Yeah, I remember there, like, I don't remember, but I've heard that there was some drama around how buggy it was when it was first released and that it is significantly improved since then, but it's still kind of kind of mm. cast a pall over the, I, uh, the franchise. When I was, I was playing a little bit of that Legendary Edition myself, Dave, I got to the rover parts in Mass Effect 1 and immediately lost all interest in it playing any of them at all, ever. Like, <sighs> just just the, my, my, my engagement tanked through the floor uh, at having to do any amount of surveying of anything. God, uh, it, the Mako sucks so bad. But then... <laughs> It goes away in two, but then surveying sucks so bad as well in a different <laughs> way. Three, I don't think, has those. Um, but like, I'm, I'm not super far. As somebody who's watched playthroughs of both, I enjoy both types of the surveying. I love the Mako mostly because it's ridiculous. And the best thing about it is you, if you find somebody who enjoys trying to flip the thing over, uh, watching them attempt to flip the Mako is freaking hilarious uh amy dallin amy dallin's playthroughs of mass effect are hysterical um and so much fun to watch she makes the whole surveying aspect of the game really fun and enjoyable to consume um one because i don't have to do it and two because she's just a delight as a human being in general so <laughs> chat says the mako doesn't suck that's just one of the false group thing no, things people it say sucks no 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 I play really when I played the game. It is the thing that made me want to not play the game. So I think that probably qualifies when, for me when as we a thing talked that about sucks. it on the Star Wars thing. I I still stand by the fact that to design the planets that the Mako drives through, they just gave somebody a terrain editor without any rules <laughs> yeah, like the, or explanation, yeah. and they just just like pulled it in random places. <laughs> That's how those planets work. Yeah, that sounds about, <laughs> sounds about right. Um, yeah, okay. So you've been just, like, plowing through that for the last, like, two weeks? So... Yeah, and Dragon Quest Builders 2, because that game was sick. Yeah, you, I think you mentioned that, last, like, last time we chatted. Um, yeah, basically the same games. I, I kept thinking I was going to play um, WoW Classic TBC. But with those two games, I don't really have time. When I finish one of them, I'm so on. my my roommate Mike is uh fully in depth, like di dived into that, and has been playing like twelve hours a day plus, like every day since it like TBC came out, and he's like mm. level sixty nine ish, you know, like close to seventy yeah, now. They need um, to stop playing now. They can't. They can't level up. Well, I, well it was like <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna clear Kara in the first week, you know, kind of like was the plan. Uh, but uh, I, I respect that level of hustle, but I could I could never do it. I don't think it's just too yeah. much. It's just too one, much. Of, one of my friends has been like, yeah, no. Um, some of my friends are doing two characters to raid in two different guilds <laughs> for what? launch, which is absolutely insane. That's um, uh, that's when do you sleep? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you do realize that there are some people who just don't, right? They just don't sleep. And they'll just die. Yep. They sacrifice their, their mental, emotional, and physical health in order to do all the things and therefore do not sleep. I mean, <laughs> they get back into the mindset of, of how people played WoW at the actual time. I mean, I oh, think, I, I, you know, I think that's the part for me that, like, that, like twigs my, my, like, weird feeling about it. Because, like, Burning Crusade was when I did this already. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it feels weird to go back and be like, I'm going to do it again. You know, like the <laughs> same, the same like, game. Woo! It's like barely a teenager. Yeah. When this happened the first time. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's just a nostalgia fest for some people. I don't know. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Drac, it occurs to me, it occurs to me you haven't experienced one of my, like, long-winded intros. Uh, for, no. For, for, for <laughs> this is what we normally this do. Is, yeah, this is the, nor this is our, this is our normal format, uh, uh, beforehand in, uh, Icewind Dale, where it was, like, the first 20 minutes to 30 minutes of the show is just bull <laughs> just bullshit, you know? I love it. Um, which is, <laughs> wait, you know, it, like, sets the comfort level, I yeah. think, you know, and, like, everybody gets kind of grooving, so. It but looks like this week, let's... Um, the timestamp is going to be whatever the thing is in 16 minutes to skip through all the bullshit oh, yeah, that we yeah, actually yeah. play. I don't, I don't know. There you go. Done the Anyone who watches everyone. this on YouTube. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you're, you know what, if you're, if you're skipping, if you're skipping the chatter, I respect that you don't care about that, but you should because it's good. You should. Um, that's how you get to know us. That's how you get to know people. Play characters. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of characters, let's talk a little about our current setup for today. Uh, I want to do some like character introductions, talking about like what kind of character they are and like what kind of abilities they have and what have you. Uh, and then we need to talk about some character creation stuff based around them being level fourteen. Uh, the issue being that they may need to purchase some magic items. Uh, so that they are on par with the dangers that they will face uh, in this particular Ooh. adventure. There are, there are dangers in this game? There, I, uh, thought, I thought I, this was... Didn't you say this was like Stardew Valley there, You know, thought, like, there yeah. are dangers if you seek them out, certainly. I mean, we could just hang out in a library, but I, you know... Yes. Even there, bookshelves could, like, fall on you, or, you know, you, you, you could get a paper cut, or, you know... Oh, there, no, not like, paper cut. Yeah. That's... <laughs> That's Ooh. the that's the level twenty. That's the <laughs> ultimate level twenty boss. Yeah. <laughs> the paper, the, the paper cut. Yeah, just like a, a sentient piece of paper that anybody, walks around. Anybody, anybody, anybody ever tells you? Anybody ever tells you that books aren't dangerous? They're incorrect. Paper cuts. For they don't know. Paper also, cuts will kill you. All. Also, the danger of an idea. Anyway. Let's uh thinking let's... for yourself. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh. That's a little too revolutionary. Yeah. I'm sorry. We're gonna have to step back from that for a second I'm and sorry. Uh, remember sorry. that we too... are nothing but like in unintelligent humans. I'm sorry, it's too far. It's too far. So let's talk about characters. Why don't we start with uh, uh I don't know, Dave. Dave, go. Alright. So today I will be playing at the fourteenth level. Drow cleric. They're called Sarah now, and they really don't like being a cleric because they had a lovely life as a courtier uh, down in Drow society. Um, however, there was an unfortunate accident during, uh, you know, uh, typically in drow society for a long time, only uh, females were allowed to practice uh, magic. Um, they were all priestesses and stuff of Wolf. Um, but with them updating with the times, um, Sarah now was chosen by their family to, you know, um, cross the boundaries somewhat, uh, despite looking more masculine taking up the, the robes. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, there was an accident. Um, rather than casting, you know, dancing lights to prep, like prepare the, um, the area, accidentally cast a light cantrip. Mm. And that's a big no-no. Uh, this attracted the... Uh, the view of a different deity uh, that they weren't expecting. So they accidentally became a cleric of Sailor. They are a light domain drow cleric. Mm, okay. All right. Uh, which, oh, you know, no. is kind of <laughs> awkward. Yeah, you probably um, used a little awkward. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, I mean, subsequently got banished to the surface. Uh, really hates it there and really hates being a cleric. So, how did Serenel find themselves at, Candle at Candlekeep? Do they like work with Candlekeep or do they, are they an adventurer or? Um, a library is one of the few places, and being a librarian is one of the few places in Candlekeep you can live entirely inside the entire time and never have to go out. 
That's true. Which yeah. is perfect. Uh, everything is dim and dank and dark, and you can go areas where there aren't even torches, like the forbidden areas. Ah, uh, yes, great. <laughs> the restricted zone. <laughs> <laughs> which you, you can slip into super easily because you cast darkness on yourself and then just go around and chill and be invisible. Uh, and then accidentally cast like sunbeam on yourself. I, we'll see. We'll see. There's lots of spells I okay. took, okay. which which blind me when I cast them. <laughs> so, uh, so, so they've been in can they've been in Candlekeep for a while. Then is what I'm is what I'm. Yeah, thinking. probably like fifty years. Okay, cool. Yeah, they're just like a resident, so to speak. Nice, nice. Like let's one of the low let's go. Let's go over to Aki. Aki, why don't you tell us about your character? Uh, I am playing a black dragonborn way of the shield monk named Goma. And I have decided that Goma is a bit of a pipsqueak. Like most dragonborn are usually like pretty tall and pretty, you know, built. But um, Goma is a, a wee thing. I actually kind of like the idea that maybe uh, Goma is still like a teenager or like a, like a, an adolescent, maybe about 13 or 14 and um you know scrappy comes from a scrappy little family you know was raised a uh, way of the shield you know their father and their mother and you know their cousins and their uncles and aunts and you know their their nibblings and all of these other members of their family kind of make up this huge like uh collection of of people who have studied this uh way of this fighting style um and they come from like a long legacy of uh, of monks um big family situation yeah yeah um their their family kind of worried maybe they were a little bit too small um because you know <laughs> they only they they're only maybe like you know 5 1 you know they're tiny they're just a slip of a thing um you know they get they got picked on a lot called lizard and and things like that when they were growing up cuz you know they're 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 just not a they're not a big boy they're 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 small small Thank boy you, um and uh yeah uh their their whole situation is that uh they they're also on top of being you know fairly you know adept at martial arts uh a big nerd uh just a big nerd uh Light, uh, books were kind of their solace growing up when they were getting picked on for being so small because uh, in books they could go on adventures and be whatever they wanted to be like in 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 the books they were always a giant so yeah cool it, yeah all right so they go uh, to the library just for the are, shits and gigs are they are they there like often like what's the what's their candle keep situation you know I think as soon as they discovered the candle keep, they were there as much as they could be. Like they have well, duties I mean, and stuff you to perform at you home. So. Trade a book in every time you go in there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, as often as they could possibly be there over the last few years, probably since their parents finally were like, "Okay, it's safe for you to go out, and be on your own." Um, it's actually pretty common because they start training so young for them to be this strong at that age, and then to retire young, essentially. Um, so. Neat. I like them. Goma seems cool. Uh, I like him. Uh, uh, Drac. Drac, tell me about your character. Yes. Um, my character is a, a human fighter, a battle master fighter named Azul. Uh, or let's put all 14 levels into fighter. Um, he is, I'm going to go with the exact opposite. He's a, he's a tall boy. He's 6'4. <laughs> he's a 6'4 human, Ooh. very tall and lean. Um, and I, oh, I'm trying to decide. I think he's come from a family of like well-known heroes, and he's trying to live up to that. I think he's trying to live up to his dad. His dad's probably like a well-known hero. I don't know his name. I call him John. I don't know <laughs> um, the well-known hero John. Um, and he's trying Wait, to live up so to his name. Azul, the way it's pronounced, is like blue in Spanish. I feel like your your father's name should also be blue, but in a different language. <laughs> Like you could call him owl, or blue, or you could call him. Uh, I don't know what blue is in French. What is blue in bleu. French? I think it's bleu. 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 Yeah. Oh, I kind of like that bleu, bleu. as as your because it sounds yeah. like B L U R. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that bleu. Blur the flash. <laughs> blur the flash. Yes, the fastest fighter. <laughs> <in> the <land. laughs> 
<laughs> and he's trying to live up to um to blur um i don't think he's been in um kind of keep very much he's like a traveling adventurer i think so i think like maybe he's passed through a couple of times but this time might be the longest he's ever been in candle keep and it's probably been like a week so that just goes to show how sure of his um, previous visits are um yeah he i think he's he thinks he's destined for greatness because of his relationship to like he's related to his dad um so he almost expects to end up being like the the protagonist of whatever adventure he's in what okay okay books right. did everybody trade in for this latest, latest thing oh. i think that's kind of a cool character building question yeah i mm. like that yeah what books did you trade in uh S S Saranel? Um, I traded in a copy of the Saloon Holy Scripts. I mean, there are probably like five of those. Yeah, I just gave them over, and the gate guard laughed so hard at me, he decided to let me in out of pity. <laughs> I He's see. like, oh my god, what has happened to you? And I was like, yeah, that's great. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. I love this. <laughs> I love being me. Uh, I think Goma just turned in like a fantasy trilogy that they'd been reading. Um, like they they like they they hang out in the YA section of this library a lot because you know they are YA. Um, so uh, lots of fantasy stuff like fantasy which in this case is actually a uh, slice of life realism. <laughs> it's just stuff, um, yeah. <laughs> but I imagine that like there is a fantasy even within this fantasy is like probably talking about realms that like you couldn't easily get to without some sort of magic. So lots yeah. of stuff about like, you know, the Feywild and like, you know, the Nine Hells and like they like to read like this and maybe this is like an epic trilogy about... Um, a young hero who ascends into the nine hells to like conquer, you know, uh, defeat some like great, great demon or something like that. So they, that's what they're treating in when they, when they hit the. And they wear all step. black and they have like a trench coat <laughs> <laughs> and they're a loner and they don't want to get close to the party. No, that's, that's not, that's not this person. They're actually no. like, they're like a ray of sunshine. <laughs> they they feel they feel justified in their belief that the nine hells must be must be the, this devil in the nine hells must be overthrown, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, Gen it's generally, too great an evil. Generally, devils too, are are worth overthrowing. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, too great an evil to allow to continue to exist. How about you, Drac? What what did uh, what did Azul trade in? I think Azul traded in um, the working manuscript of Blair's autobiography. Oh, uh, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, like the fam yeah. like the family history stuff. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we turned that in ages ago for our family. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. My family's not allowed here. <laughs> my family oh, is much older than yours. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. my father's apparently the only one that anyone's really interested in reading about. So I guess that's the only mm. autobiography I could bring in. I was going to bring in mine, but apparently that didn't count. Mm. Well, we'll do an adventure for you. Yeah, well, you know, we'll get like you're level fourteen. It's time to get some. It's time to get some noteful experiences under <laughs> your belt, there, uh, Uzul. Uh, so. You all find yourselves at the candle keep doing your various candle keep, you know, uh, daily daily grind. What sort of stuff do you get up like up to day to day when you're hanging out here? Because all of you said you'd kind of like come here fairly often, except for maybe as little I didn't, I wasn't sure. Um, but like uh, Goma's here all the time, and so I and and Serena like lives here. So what's your what's your sort of day to day look like? uh yeah goma can usually be found like actually in the stacks like probably like in like a gap between the books like curled up like 
with their their tail sort of wrapped around them like maybe sometimes you might catch them snoozing up there like a cat um <laughs> but they're just like kind of always hunched up they their their posture is wrecked because of the weird positions they're like twisted themselves into just to be able to like get up in the stacks they never use one of the comfy chairs you just kind of climb up into the into the stacks and read in there fair enough um how about you how about you Sarenel? what's your like your day-to-day yeah i live in the um my job mostly um is to help visitors uh especially in the dim and dingy dark corners of um, the candle keep, uh, provide services such as illumination and bright lights. And if any anything needs to be read in sunlight for it to be, you see the magical letters in it. And yeah, they're kind of like a lamplighter except one filled with self-loathing uh, all the time. Okay. So... One day one day, Dave will play a character that likes themselves. Uh, so... <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel like Detective, what was it? Detective, Detective Gizmo, Gizmo felt was... at, kind of <laughs> self-confident. Detective, Detective Gizmo <clears throat> was fine. Uh, I've one played a character that like so I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna know. think it's about that while other people do uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh Azul, what's your sort of like candle keep day to day? If you're if you're here, maybe you're just arriving or what have you. I think I'm just arriving. I mean okay. no, no, no. I think I'm here and I think right at this very moment, um, I'm trying to help a cat out of a tree. A little girl <laughs> Are you sure? and they saw how apparently like I was probably the tallest one around at the time. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Could you help me get that cat out of the tree? And he was like <laughs> she- of course, I'm a hero. That's that was something a hero. So you're would just do. trying so to do you're trying to do like hero stuff, and the cat <laughs> is refusing to like come down from the tree, just like absolutely, just like hey, hey, claws can, into the bark, like fully <laughs> not at all wanting to follow your heroic uh, example and and come down. So you're you perhaps struggling a little with the the cat situation. Yeah, um, definitely. I think at some point I'm like, okay, hold on. I- I'll come up there and get you. And it's going to like start trying to climb up the tree as well. <laughs> You're just like, in, <laughs> just like in the tree trying to get the cat like, to come. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. That's, that does sound, that does sound like, like you. Um, so during your long studies uh in uh i think the most serious scholar among you is probably saranel when it comes to like reading stuff in a in a structured academic kind of a way i'm sure uh goma just pulls you know whatever's 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 good and checks a couple pages and then goes eh whatever and then puts it away or <laughs> you know picks up a new thing i know exactly that kind of reader um uh but so you know a bunch of people, Saranel, who like run the organization of the the library and just like the employees around here who who are sort of like the scribes or you'd call them uh, of Candlekeep, and uh, one of the most well known, I think, or like uh, frequently in trouble is a man named Ramalier. And he is like a like a clumsy sort of a clumsy ish like human male who's like always tripping over his own robes like they don't fit properly uh, and and like dropping stuff and like he's been responsible for like knocking coffee onto a, a you know valuable text more than once uh, just just kind of like trying to do his best you know um, and you see him sort of organizing books and he's got like this big like trolley of books with him and he's like putting stuff back on the shelf like reshelving uh a bunch of things um but you can see that he's putting in some of them in like upside down or like the wrong way or you know like just like the organization is a little off it's like in the right place but not quite in the right place no 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 you know this we've told you a hundred times the times of everlasting flame can't go next to the books of 
forever frost. He he's looking at you like like waiting for you to finish. <laughs> I should have <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I should have thought about it he, before I said anything. And he goes like, "Oh, I I didn't know you were I didn't know you were here. Uh, uh, yeah, no, you're right. i uh, just you know. Look, there's... they're making a puddle. No, they're... no, look, like I can fix it. I can fix. It, takes them both out and like sort of separates them and puts one aside and puts it back and goes like, oh, "That's fine. It's just definitely it's okay. Don't just worry about it." Um, I got a, I got a whole bunch of these to put back. I don't suppose you want to, you know, help me out with this. You, uh, it's kind of a lot. And I, I promised, you know, uh, I, I promised Kate that I was going to go and meet her for lunch. And then they dropped all these like books on my lap and, and, uh, it's kind of, you know, like, you know, Kate isn't actually into you, don't you? I, I, you, can, you Everybody knows that she's got a thing for, uh, that werewolf fellow who came through, Greg's. <laughs> I very yeah, handsome. I in mean, I, you, you might be right, but you know, if somebody invites you to go have lunch or whatever, you want to try and keep that date, no matter what. If you know, I shoot your shot or whatever. So, so you want you want to help me out or? I mean, I don't want to, but <laughs> technically, I don't have anything else that I'm supposed to do right now, and I'm supposed to make myself useful, so I suppose I'll do it. Uh, okay, great. Uh, here, and, and he, like, takes a sort of, like, an armful and, and hands you, like, this stack of books and says, like, you just take these ones, and I'll, I'll, I'll do the rest, no problem. Sure. All right. So, uh... Saranel wanders off to to you know place the books in the correct locations and what have you, uh, and you uh, Goma from your from your current vantage point wherever that may be you can see Saranel with this like book of or with, or with this like pile of not necessarily familiar books in their arms uh, like walking you know down the, the the like stack corridors and putting things and various piles or shelves or what have you. Hello. Oh, can I help? Oh, yes, little one. I uh, let me have a look. Is there anything you might like in here? Oh. Mm. There are definitely a bunch of books you've never seen before, Goma, in the pile. Like, uh, you know, obscure things maybe not fantasy things but obscure things oh that looks like very very important stuff i mean probably most of the stuff here is not everything yeah. some of um, it's just fun to read yeah but most of those came in early they stopped accepting fiction really i think you were lucky one of the last ones that got in on the old rules why would you stop accepting fiction there's all kinds of important stuff that can be found in fiction so many Ooh. inspirations that can be gleaned the weave has repaired itself people are doing planar travel all the time the places that the heroes go they just exist. People go there on holiday. What can I say? Not everybody can go there. That's true. I can. Well, good for you. Sure. So you see a, a book on, as, as Serenel is like putting stuff onto the shelves in various orders and origins, uh, you see a book uh, on the stack, like the top of the stack that Serenel is holding, called The Scrivener's Tale. There's a, this says The Scrivener's Tale on it, a nice white lettering on a like, it's like a greenish book with like gold patterns on it. Um, you've never seen it before. It's it's like uh, uh, unique, um, and it looks like a it looks like a storybook, basically. Like it looks what like a uh, some kind of narrative for sure. What about that one? That one looks like it's new. Uh, yeah. Actually, it doesn't have any of the. Normally, they come with a note to tell me where to put it. May I? 
I mean, then I don't have to put it away. Yeah, I think it immediately occurs to you, Saranel, that uh, your Ramalier probably just, like, grabbed the wrong stack of books or, like, had uh, one misplaced this hasn't or been sorted something. Yet. Yeah, like, it's not supposed to be in this pile, really. Goma, Goma takes the book and kind of runs their claws along, like, the gold yeah, lettering and it's stuff. Yeah, so it's, so it's got, like, texture. It's, like, a green tome with, like, raised gold patterning and, like, leafy kind of patterns around the edges. Uh, and the writing is this, like, really nice, clean sort of, like, white text, like, white block text. Um, I might have a handout. Let me see if I have a handout. This book is really nice. Uh, you know there you go. It That's in? what it looks like. Uh, I mean, no. Uh, I it got a. Normally, under the author's name, there's a. Well, there's no author's name on the on the binding. I don't see it. Yeah, on there the is. Outside. There is. There is actually isn't an author's name on it at all, as far as you can tell on the outside. Yeah. Uh, I want to open it to like the first page and see if there's a byline in there. Uh, okay, hang on one sec. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we all know that something bad's gonna happen. I mean, it's just a story, right? So this it's is an adventure. Story. So you That's open it. Dragon, curious so, dragon so you open it up to the you open it up to the title page, and on the title page. There is the, you know how there's always like a splash page in books that's like the same as the cover or like, you know, some kind of like credits page almost. Um, you you read some of the words on that page. You get through like the Scrivener's Tale, something, something, something. And then the words start to like fade out a little bit from the page as if they're like, um, it's like invisible ink disappearing, you know? Um, and you feel a weird... Uh, feeling on your um, fingertips, the the like your your hands as you're like holding the book, and you can see the words that are disappearing from the page appearing on your on your hands in like script written around your fingers and down onto your palm, and then like further and further along in like a spiral around your um, your limb, uh, all the way up to like the uh, sort of. Uh, bend in your elbow and just passed up to your to your uh, bicep. Oh, and for oh. you because you're black a uh, black dragonborn, the the writing is like this what like white stark like ink almost, um and like rubbing at it or or fussing with it doesn't do anything to it. Randallkeep oh. does not accept any responsibility for the. <laughs> harm that you incur by opening books that have not been sorted as yet. Unfortunately, Saranel, you also feel the wash of magic as the book is opened come over oh. you. As you're, as you're stating the disclaimer, uh, you, you feel the same sort of thing happening. Uh, this, like, this, like, buzz of magic that wraps up your fingers and around your hand and uh, up up your arm. And you can see the text from the book, like, uh, forming on it. Like, you can read the words that are that are there. Um, what does it say? So... What does it say? Uh, hang on. I will... Oh, no. I just opened it. That's all I did. <laughs> the Scrivener's Tale. What, what is in... What is in the Scrivener's Tale? What a question. What's in the box? So, uh, you definitely feel as if you have been affected by, like, a, a magical, a magical effect, you know? Like, uh, Saranel, you'd be familiar with this, obviously, as a purveyor of magic, um, so to speak. Oh. Uh, th Ooh. this is, this is some kind of, like, curse or, or, like, magical effect that was on the book that is transferred to you. Uh, it's not... Don't worry. It's not This happens good. all the time. What do you mean this happens all the time? Spell magic. Yeah, does spell mag if you cast a spell magic, uh by the way, uh the there's an immediate feeling of uh you should have done that because it's against the rules to cast magic within Candlekeep. Uh and uh your magic is oh, yeah. snapped out of the air by an un unseeable force. Uh, Ooh, as if, as if, almost as if, like, the fire, uh, extinguisher, you know, kind of went off, but, like, you know, in a magical sense. Um, 
Yeah, so in your in your You're desperation, not you do that in here. I thought my permit was still valid. I guess I let it expire. So, reading along your arm, Goma, uh, you can see that the story starts off telling the the fairy tale of a selfish and amoral arc fay called the Princess of the Shadow Glass, who's locked in a blood feud with the Queen of Air and Darkness, the ruler of the gloaming court in the Feywild. And that's as far as you get before, like, you run out of text, basically, like, on your arm. Um... But, I mean, you still have the book in your hand. We we should probably go and see somebody about this. An expert, I think. Yep. This isn't... This isn't my job. Somebody... The, uh, the cursed team? <laughs> the cursed anyone team? Anyone? Uh, who's uh, on duty today? Saranel, I didn't you, look at the rotor. You, you would know... Uh, you would know who it is, actually. Um... That there are there are people who know the foremost expert on sub on the subject of curses in Candlekeep is a, a human uh, mage named Teles Avhost, great reader Teles Avhost. Mm. I think we're gonna have to get an appointment. Hopefully, this doesn't you know do anything bad. It's just an awful temporary tattoo, but I guess we're gonna have to go and see. My mom uh, is not gonna be happy about this. No, it it's okay. I mean, we'll just go up there. We'll get in the waiting room. We'll take a ticket, and hopefully, <laughs> the queue's not too long. So, uh, it's at this point that our our dear hero, uh, um, Azul, has managed to prize the cat from the tree, um, and. Here's uh, one. God damn cat. <laughs> I think the little girl looks <laughs> like your little girl. So the cat is clinging to you in the way that cats do that when they're like really scared or nervous, like just like the claws are in, you know, like you're having to kind of hold on to the cat so it doesn't squirm out of your hands. Um, it's not comfortable. And when you hand the cat, like try and hand the cat over to the little girl, it, the demeanor of the cat like immediately changes to being like super comfortable and very happy. Uh, and she takes him oh, and goes okay. like, thank you for rescuing him from the tree. He doesn't usually climb up there, but, you know, sometimes he gets really, uh, uh, energetic and just, like, has to run around and uh, I'll, I'll make sure to keep the door closed next time. Yes, make sure you do that. I pity anyone else who has to help that poor kitten. That uh, poor kitten should really, never have been I really do. I really do take good care of him, though. Like, I do. You know, and she, like, walks away all happy with the cat. Like, the cat looks as if uh, they, they're, they you know, they're kind of spoiled. And you can tell just, like, in yeah. the little girl's arms that she pays a lot of attention to this cat. Um, kind of, like, fixes himself, like, whew, that was not very hero-like. <laughs> I mean, <sighs> you succeeded in your quest, so to speak. Yeah, he succeeded by his reaction, like, his angle's like, ooh, can't... Ooh, ooh, yeah, can't do that. Compo yeah. Composure. So, um, you probably, like, are looking for somebody in charge around here, or, like, or for something to do, right, Azul? Well? Yeah, like... I think, like, he's finished his last adventure. The last adventure he went on was, like, a week or two ago. He's at this point he's unemployed, so he wants kind of so he wants a job. You've he's actually, a I think, I think you've actually done jobs for uh for a uh, great reader of Ost before. Like yeah, yeah. You, you and a Miss of Ost have uh sort of like a an official standing relationship for you know collecting stuff that's owed to Candlekeep or you know uh clearing out the local uh troll cave or, or yeah. whatever <laughs> these kinds of things. Um, so like, you're... what better way to get a, a my story in a book than help someone who's in charge of books? Yeah, exactly. You know? like, like, the... No better way. Always make good impressions on writers. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you, I think you're already um, like in her office when the other two arrive. You know, like you, you've made your way after rescuing the cat. You make your way into this like grand hall and down some hallways to the like back room where you know the the great reader of Ost's office is, and it's this like very comfortably appointed place with like good light and like. Um, a bunch of books are sort of like piled on her desk and she's got some papers in front of her that are, you know, like, uh, you can easily read that she's been like recording something or writing something like before she sort of like got this meeting with you. Um, 
and uh, there are some like thick curtains that are like drawn back, so there's just like a lot of natural light coming in. Yeah. Um, and I think it's like got like a he's probably tending to some wounds that are left behind from this. Yeah, cat. it's like dabbing. <laughs> so it. he's like dabbing some wounds. <laughs> so, so she's she's uh, she says, you know, you did very well with those ogres the last time. Um, your little one was very worried about how that would turn out, but you were you were di- more diplomatic than I thought. Um, once I have something for you, I'd be more than happy to send you on another task, but nothing has really come across my desk that I would consider important enough to send someone of your particular skill, and you enter through the doors! <laughs> Uh, our our other pair enters through the doors with their their curse and book in hand. We need help. I I opened a book and ended up with this. Oh uh, oh. Um. Uh, Saranel, what could you mm, explain a little more thoroughly than uh Goma here? First of all. I wasn't supposed to be working in that section. I did it as a favor. So actually, it is the person whose name I forgot's fault. Uh, Ramalir. Ramalir had this stack of books. I was helping out, being very useful. Um, However, there was an uncatalogued book looked like a fairy tale i gave it to goma unfortunately now we have this and my permit ran out so i tried to dispel it and it didn't work (laughs) she she like uh walks around her desk to you goma and looks at the the markings a little more closely uh trying to sort of like assess what is going on uh and uh she says um oh well this is uh not a good sign certainly she like looks it over turns turns your arm a bit like reads the the uh, mind close the curtains if I, could we could mm, we yes actually i need the light like <laughs> holding you know um <laughs> all right do you, do you need a pair of sunglasses? I know I know some jar friends of mine who <laughs> used to wear sunglasses, keep that on their person pretty much mm. all the time. Yeah, I mean Haha. Doesn't that's not how it works. So um It's fine. It's fine, I'm fine. You said you tried to dispel magic spell on the premises, uh Saranel? Well normally I mean, for us scribes, uh, high-level scribes, and you know the system. But I, I just am... let mine. I just let mine run out. I'm, okay, was... I'm well aware. Yes, but I just wanted to inform you that it probably wouldn't have done what you needed, regardless. Uh, it's standard protocol. I don't even think a greater restoration or a remove curse will be enough to remove this. Um, oh, I was going to go and pray. I'm really right. sorry, um, young one. He's gonna go up to go and like pat them on the head. You're really gonna regret getting this tattoo. It <laughs> is. I'm very sorry. What exactly do you think you're doing? Oh, um, sorry. I should probably ask. Oh, for by the way, as that. soon as you touch Goma, uh, uh oh great, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As soon as you touch a goma, you feel a buzzing in your fingertips, and um, the writing copies itself onto your arm in the same uh, horrible spiral. The the ink is in a the, you know a, like a whatever color would be starkest against your Azul's uh, complexion. Probably uh, white. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured, but I just want to make oh, sure. Oh boy, um, um, this is a fully black party. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, and so. Uh, a Voss gives you a look that's like, really? <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I should have seen this coming. I'll be honest. I should have seen that coming. What did you get? I, I'm very sorry, little one. Don't call uh, me that. What my, should I call you? My name is Goma. Goma. I'm very sorry, Goma. So I think 
if I'm correct, that this particular curse is going to be progressive. Um, mm. I don't think the magic is dormant as of yet, which means that more will happen uh, as time goes on. Um, some might be good, some bad. I I can't say. I've never seen this particular curse before, and they're all unique and, and so on. Um, how do we break it? There, there must be a way. This is definitely not my first curse. I've so she re on. she reaches out for the the book of the scrivener's tale from you, um, Goma. Uh, if if I might, she right. takes she takes the book and and looks it over and says, "Oh yes, yes. Um, let's see where this came from, and then perhaps we can track down." you know, the origins of this curse. And she goes I was going to do that. I was going to do that after I came. All right, you were right to come to me first. And she sets, mm. she sets the actual book aside and then flips through a, flips through a tome that of like, that looks like a ledger or like records or, or what have you on, on the side of her desk. Um, and she says, ah, oh, yes. Uh, brought here by, uh, Makil Rillin. Uh, from a noble family in Baldur's Gate. Oh. Oh. Don't know okay. what happened to Rillin, but uh, you could perhaps go and ask their family about where the book came from, if not them themselves. I'm always moving anyway. It's probably on the way to where I'm heading to it. Well, so you, I don't mind. You needed something to do. This is certainly something. And who knows if the curse will end in your death if you don't act. So, oh. How, how far away mm. is Baldur's Gate? Uh, I have to ask my mom for permission. Fair, oh. A fair distance. Um, the actual distance between Candlekeep and Baldur's Gate is like a couple of days, I think. Uh, yeah, still on the Salt Coast. Yeah. Not too far. And it's just up north. Uh, a fair Two ways, days. a couple of days north. If you take the roads. Okay. Maybe it's just better to ask my mom for forgiveness instead of permission. I don't think she wants to know that I got cursed. I think that would mean she wouldn't let me come back here. And I really like this place. You have good books. So... Everybody help me keep a secret from my mom. Yes, of course. If those two go and break the curse, no, just stay here. Do you think that's going to be? We're going to need your help for that's... sure. The more hands on deck, the better. And also, it's oh. unlikely that this thing will just break at a distance. Whatever it is, it's the middle of summer. Best you and... all go together. I can. I have a hat in my backpack. If that would that help, add shade. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you're joking. No. Doesn't help. Okay. Are you sure sunglasses don't help? Or <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. You're going to see that I can only possibly make it worse for myself. That's why I don't want to go. That's why I live in a library. Well, she... I guess we're gonna go and break so... a curse or whatever. You can stay. You can stay here and see what happens when the curse runs its course, if you'd prefer. I can't cast resurrection on myself, unfortunately. No. Alright. <laughs> so, um my thought would be go and visit the Rillin family in Baldur's Gate. See what you can find out about the book itself. Do take the book with you. She like hands the scrivener's tail back to Goma. Um, just in case it's needed. Okay. Sounds good. Oh, by the way, my name is Azul, since we're going to be adventuring together. I'm the, the son of the famous Blur, if you've heard of him. No, I, I know Blur. Yeah. I, I met him that. once. Seemed like a decent guy. <laughs> Most people think, I mean, yes, he is. He wasn't Does anything he... amazing. Does he look like you? Right. Uh, sort of. I, I suppose I look more like him. But yes, he's just as tall, but probably a bit more muscular. I've been trying to get that tone and weight, I suppose, but it just doesn't seem to <laughs> stick. I don't see the resemblance, honestly, but I mean, maybe it's my memory. Humans. I... I've yeah, never met your humans. dad, so I have no idea. 
You are you a fan of books? Me, I love books. I you probably read a few of his adventures that have been adapted into novels. Maybe. Like there was one about um, I think they made his character very unrealistic, but a very happy-go-lucky chipper person going down to nine hells. That was based on um, his his story when he was a bit younger. Didn't that um, get adapted into a play? Was it turned into a trilogy? Yes, actually, yes. I think they're <laughs> gonna they're probably gonna extend it. As a- well. a- Avos just like stands back and lets you all kind of like talk and introduce yourselves. You know. <laughs> She doesn't really mind. I guess we should. Guess we should head to Baldur's Gate. But seriously, you're, that those books were based on your dad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they definitely embellished it a little bit, um, but most of it is actually accurate, except for the maybe happy go lucky chipper personality. When he was going through a phase at that time of his life, um, like a kind of I rebellious was, phase. Oh, oh, being happy and chipper. And- is, is rebellious? Um, I think the happy chipper part was what they embellished. It wasn't, he was, oh. he told me the stories. And his his mum and my grandma actually told me some of the stories of when he was younger. He was a real troublemaker. Is Pretty what sure said. he got kicked out of the tavern when he was here. I, I remember that happening. Yes, yeah. Your dad sounds really fascinating. <laughs> uh. I bet my dad could kick his butt though. <laughs> I would like to see that. My dad I don't mean that as a threat. I dad. generally would like I would like to front row seats to see that happen. <laughs> when I get back home, I'll ask my dad about it. Great. And I'll go ask my dad and say that someone challenges honor or something. And that'll, that'll definitely get him riled up. I'll go back to my dad and I'll get executed for accidentally being that was possessed really by the dark direction. Yeah, that was... Well, really... I'm a drow. What do you expect? I above ground, something went wrong somewhere. So, uh, um, Avost, Avost suggests um, perhaps you might want to stay the night and then head out in the morning. Uh, trips over land are always better when you are had a good breakfast, after all. I will stay the night and fight the break of dawn. Can you not look, can you not see oh. in the dark? Can you not just make a go now? I'm trying to get there. I mean, I, you're, off. You're certain, I can't see in the dark. You're actually. certainly free to leave anytime you want. That's merely a suggestion. I, I'm all for waiting until daybreak. I also cannot see in the dark. We see perfectly fine in the light, though. If that is that, that I feel like that would be. No, useful. so can I. I just... <laughs> we get it. The, the light's not your aesthetic, <laughs> not your vibe. And yet. And yet. Oh, I just got it. That's ironic. That's really ironic. Because you're drow and you're... Oh. Praise the moon oh. or whatever. Thanks, Aileen. It's great. I love being here. You were chosen for something special. Yeah, or they'll just chant to pull your leg. Yeah, or you're just yeah, really yeah, unlucky. I've, yeah. Exactly. You'll... Um, My dad has come across some gods and goddesses. They love messing with mortals. I love... Like uh, I'll make sure that you have some um, lodgings prepared if you don't already. Those of you who already do, then you, know, you can go back to those. You mean I can't sleep in the stacks? You, you can't. I'm not going to. St- you shouldn't be sleeping there anyway. <laughs> it's terrible for your posture yeah, as well. I have never slept in the stacks. Mm. Sounds oh. legit. I believe them. Yeah. Yes, I will. Absolutely. I will uh, just choose to believe that for now. Um, you you may go. I, I don't think I have anything else that I can help you with uh, in this particular case. Baldur's Gate, seek out the Rillins. And um, who do we go to for lodging? Because I was I was initially just passing through. Oh, really uh, place. speak speak to Ramalier. He'll sort you out. Okay, of course. I'm gonna so, pick up my room. I'll room with you. <laughs> so You're more than welcome to. So uh, yeah. you leave. Uh. Avost's office, great reader of Avost's office, and make your way to sort of the common areas. Uh, Saranel, you already have like a, you know, like a room that is yours, um, in the in the employee scribe section. Yeah, um, I worked here thirty years, and now I don't have to have bunk beds. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's lucky. Um, 
and uh, you uh, so will find a put upon um, human, you know, fellow going about some task in a, a rather haphazard manner, uh, clearing some tables or, you know, just like generally tidying up around the place. Uh, and it's, you know, if this were a movie, it would, you'd see it was like Ramelier from, from earlier, the same guy. Um, and, uh, he, he sees you folks coming in and says, oh, the, 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 the great reader, uh, sent ahead, uh, uh, irony came and told me that, um, y- did you need a place to sleep for tonight? Yes. Yes. And Gomer here is going to be lodging with me. Oh, great. Yeah. One is much easier than two. You know, we're always packed up here. Just like so many people coming and going. Um, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I'll talk to the innkeeper and I'll, I'll get you something worked out. Just, just the one room then. Yeah. That should do, right? Yes. We don't even need two beds. Uh, hey. Hey. When I get back from this, we're going to have words, all right? We're, about what? We got cursed. I am not a fan. I'm pretty sure they spelled regrets wrong. Oh, here. that's a. That's a tough bit of luck there. Um, mm. Because of the books that you gave Sarah now. Yep. You did it properly sort. Oh. Mm. Oh. I yep. was. Oh. Well, I, I, it was an honest mistake. I didn't. I didn't mean to. You know, put that. Yep. Oh, I'm not mad. This is kind of fun. Well, well, alrighty, this then. was not the first tattoo I was thinking about getting. Or the second, actually. I do have another one. Uh, I, I don't like talking about that. That was a. <laughs> that's a that's a tattoo I regret. Mm. But, um, yeah, no, I did not expect this one. Do we get like compensation for this? I feel like this is definitely on the library's part. I'm just asking. I, uh, uh, but at the very least, on your part. Didn't Saranel tell you Candlekeep's not responsible for any uh, okay. magical mishaps or cur- curses or or? When you uh, came in, there was a magical disclaimer do you, you gotta not sign read the, the whole you gotta, thing you gotta no sign. one no one reads the terms and conditions you gotta, we, you, everyone yeah. knows that you gotta sign the yeah. waiver at the the watchman when he comes in if you sign that then yeah we're we're not responsible for any magical mishaps <sighs> that may occur on the premises you are well wow. what what no i that's not how it works either you didn't look at the, the you, if you weren't being careful that's also on you mm-hmm. They let a child open a book that had never been seen before. <laughs> sounds like okay. a son. Sounds like a son. You actually then. It's on everybody. Can we please find a room? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. No problem. Come with me. And he he like walks away up up a little like flight of stairs, you know, around a little corner, uh, to a hall of of uh like in rooms and and unlocks one for you and and like opens it and it keeps the key in the lock and, and like let's go it's like uh, you right here this will this will do you and, and it's, we have you. two extra blankets please uh i can yeah sure i'll see about that um and it's it's just like a simple room it has a bed and like a nightstand and you know that that's kind of it um something you notice when you walk in however is that there is like a candle like lit, you know, um, in here casting light, but neither of you. I, I assume Saranel is not here. I assume Saranel is like gone to their room. Yeah, neither of you cast a shadow at all. Uh, mm. like the light hits you and appears to go straight through you. Oh, uh, that is odd. Um, That's cool. I wonder if it's because of our curse. It most likely is. Um, hold on. I almost like take a step into the room and just be like ready for any traps that might occur. Nothing nothing happens. No? You know, it's a it's a quiet, mm. quiet in room. Weird. But I, I guess have... it's not unuseful. So you've been cursed before? Yes, actually I have. It was nothing like this. Twice as painful, or more painful. <laughs> Twice of nothing is still nothing. It's, it was more painful. But this is actually not too bad. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. My scales have like even more texture to them now. Have you um, have you looked at the book at all since you like? Have you opened the not book yet. again? But as soon as my blankets get here, I'm gonna look at it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ramelier, Ramelier does show up about like 15 or 20 minutes later with the uh, extra blankets and like uh, 
you know, knocks and hands them over. Okay, and when when Goma gets the extra blankets, uh, at the foot of the bed, like at the end of the bed, uh, not on the bed, but like at the foot of the bed, they like build a little blanket nest and they kind of crawl into it. Whoa, 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 like, whoa, 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 Goma. What? You're taking a bed. No, I will no, no, sleep no. in the seat. I don't like beds. I always mm. sleep like this. This is how we sleep in my family, in little nests that we build. If I if I were really lucky, oh, and like Goma reaches into the pocket and they bring out their little little pouch of gold pieces and they stick it underneath the blankets. I, <laughs> now 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 I'm doing it right. Oh, you have your own hoard. I yeah. I see. Correct. Do you want yeah. more? And he's gonna like ruffle through his um, bag and try and pull out a few coins that he might have lying around and like flick <laughs> a few over to them. Wow, you're so nice. And they add the coins to their their pouch, and they stick it back underneath their blanket, and then they kind of curl up, you know, like a, like a like a little snack, and and then they open the book. Okay, so on opening the book, you can see that the text that has been like transcribed onto your arm isn't in the book, but the rest of the text kind of is still there, and it hasn't like it hasn't disappeared. Um, look! 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 The missing Ooh. text on our arms. Oh, it's oh. Mm. But the rest of it's still here. Could you hold the book in front of the candlelight for a second? Okay. Uh, not too close, of course. Just close enough to actually cast a shadow. Of course. The book casts a shadow. Mm. The book itself casts a shadow. There's, there's, there's shadow. Okay. I guess that's one hypothesis debunked. We don't know that for sure. Maybe the candle, maybe the curse is involved somehow. We don't know yet. We oh, won't no, know most until definitely we have is. broken it. In any yeah. case. I'm assuming that you're going to read this book, uh, uh -huh. Goma. Uh, so I'm going to give everybody a summary because I'm sure Goma will summarize it for everyone uh, uh -huh. when they get the their... Most epic of young, uh, young adult fashion. Yeah, when they get their opportunity. So the Scrivener's Tale tells the story of a selfish and amoral arc fae called the Princess of, Sha of the Shadow Glass, who's locked in a blood feud with the Queen of Air and Darkness, the ruler of the Gloaming Court and the Feywild. The Queen is described as an intelligent, gleaming black crystal that hovers over a throne of twisted, petrified wood. The Princess is cast in the role of the protagonist, yet she views everyone else as a pawn in her struggle. The tale ends with a monologue promising bloody reprisals upon everyone the Princess believes has wronged her. Exiled to the mortal realm, the Princess of the Shadowglass finds a home in the land of humans, elves, dwarves, gnomes, and halflings. They show her true friendship, gifting her with treasures, lands, and titles. In the end, her companions, including the book's narrator, known only as the Scrivener, convince the Princess to reclaim her rightful place as the High Noble of the Fae. The details of the Scrivener's tale indicate that the Princess of the Shadowglass began as a Fae of indeterminate type, most likely an Eladrin, and ultimately became an Arc Fae possessing powerful magical abilities related to Shadow, Glass, and Illusion. The Scrivener of the title is an elf named Zirion, who wrote the book some 900 years ago. Oh, this book is very old. The content of the book, by the way, suggests that the Scrivener was compelled to write the tale, which contains effusive praise for the princess. Like, it's very it's very self-congratulatory kind of a book. Yeah. You're an arc fate, you just gives people... Yeah, to... you just like, write a book about me, make it, compl <laughs> make it complimentary, make it complimentary. I feel as though we are dealing with an unreliable narrator. So... I imagine all of that reading happening in a, you know, like a, what do you call it, montage of, of nighttime reading with like a candle close by and like uh, Azul snoring on the bed or what have you during the He's just starfished out. He's too tall for the bed. So <laughs> he's, like, oh, he's too big. Of his yeah. arms are hanging off. Um, how about you, Saranel? What's your evening look like now that you have some private time? Um... Called probably really boring. <laughs> you also notice that you don't cast a shadow, by the way, when you're like, uh, or actually, you probably have a mirror in like a bathroom nearby or like a room, uh, and you also don't cast a reflection. So, oh, great! No, that's that's good. I'd have to notice the shadow outside of my room because my actual room, I have like 
tape around things <laughs> boarded like, up the window and it's just pitch black all the it's time as dark as possible it. yeah <laughs> yeah and i'm probably just like casually scrying them reading the book i'm just like oh my god <laughs> you're scrying us wow yeah just okay. like in that in room i know you've gone to so you're just casting magic and candle keep again is that your plan I've got my permit back. I went and I got it. <laughs> okay. I did. I keep forgetting that that's a rule in the system. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah Candle Keep doesn't like magic cast on its premises. Yeah. But, but yeah, you have you have permission or yeah, whatever. I'm allowed. <laughs> um, so the night passes uneventfully then if you're busy, you know, scrying and then taking a nap or, or what have you. Um, nothing, nothing really comes out of it. You see Goma, like, awake and reading the actual book uh long into the night um you all get a nice long rest uh and let me check uh any character that each character also against this no 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 oh god okay third dawn but there is a dream yes a mysterious oh boy That you we all, see Greg screaming. That, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's just a guy. He has like a sausage roll brand, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, so the mysterious dream is as follows. For all of you, when once you get to bed, you have the same dream. The dream is as vivid as anything you remember from your actual life. You feel the sweltering sun beating down as you take shelter in the shadow of a tumbled down tower. In the distance, a vast army is on the march across mud-churned farm fields. The need to hide from that force overwhelms you, and you quickly retreat inside the tower. Inside the tower's half-ruined walls, you discover a boar spear that is driven shaft down into the ground, and whose head is adorned with three crowns. One limb of the spear's crossguard bears a narrow silver circlet. On the other hangs a crown of adamantine, shaped to be worn over a helm. And around the spearhead is a golden crown adorned with emeralds. You feel the need to seize one of them. And then the dream ends. And you all wake up, basically, in the morning, uh, having had this, this dream. <clears throat> Anyone who has a history checks, like, who has the skill in history can roll to see if they know anything about these crowns. Let's see. I mean, I don't... <laughs> But I could roll it anyway. It was no, specific no. for anyone. You need, no. you need proficiency. Yeah. Yep, not me. I have a feeling it might only be. Serenelle yeah. has it. History 17. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll book not. I need history. Uh, so, um, you know that the three crowns, you remember a silver circlet, the adamantine crown, and the golden crown were symbols of a place called Falorm also known as the Realm of Three Crowns, and that this kingdom fell to a goblinoid invasion nearly 900 years ago. I wonder what that's got to do with anything. <laughs> well, I don't know. You know about it. So, uh, I assume you all meet up again in the morning? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Ugh. All prepared. We've all got our stuff. Yeah, grab all your things. You get ready to head out from Candlekeep. Uh, oh, Speaking of things, I have a question. I don't know if this is going to come up later on, but do you get magic items? I was going to say, actually, while <laughs> gathering your things, you may select what's the reasonable amount of magic items for this level, Dave. Feel free to inform us. Um... It's sort of vague. How many well, did we, you how many did you take? On the low end, I reckon you can very safely do um a rare and two uncommons. Okay. Let's do that. You, since it's tier three, you might be able to get into very rares. Not, not exactly. no, rare is five thousand to fifty thousand, so very rare is fifty thousand like and Oof. higher. Yeah. Um, You're not level fourteen. Yeah, I know, but this'll do. So you yeah, may you may each select two uncommon and two rare magic items to bring with you on this adventure, and we'll take a break, 
and folks can think about that, and we'll come back and talk about what your possessions are uh, once once we return. So uh, see you folks in just a couple minutes. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Bye. Bye, friends. Bye. Be right back. Don't go anywhere. Hello, and we're back, dear friends, from our break. Um, we were discussing magic items that the party might have in their possession. Two uncommon and one rare magic item. Uh, I do have some suggestions, but they're my personal written suggestions uh, that we've been writing during the magic item writing streams. So if you want some alternate options for your magic item purchases, my own personal not yet tested in a live environment uncommon and rare magic items could also potentially be of use to you. You got any very rares? I'll test. I'll test a very rare. You'll oh, wow. You'll nice test try, it. Dave. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was looking at it in the DMG. We probably should have a very rare, but you know, like, whatever. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine, probably. Uh, do you have any uncommon? I have, I've uh, got one me, rare ready, one let me, uncommon. Let me, see what, let me see what I can I can offer you, Drac, uh, okay. from, from our repository of untested <laughs> magic items. Um, uh, this the, I just thought of this right now. So I... This book is uh, so we have uh, the Duelist's Glove, which is a fancy armor dueling gauntlet that allows you to cast com cast Compel Duel once a day, uh, forcing the target to do to uh, do the save at disadvantage. Uh, we've got the Boots of Bells, which are fabulously bell jangly boots that grant the user advantage on all performance, dance, and acrobatics checks while they're wearing them, but also grant the user an extra five feet of movement speed as part of the attack action. The movement does provoke attacks of opportunity, however. Uh, those are both uncommon. Uh, then we have, uh, we have the Shard of Shadow, which is also uncommon, which, uh, has three charges, and you can cast Darkness, uh, Darkness with one charge, and, uh, anyone attuned to it has Devil Sight, like, the Devil Sight Eldritch, Ooh. uh, uh, whatever, Eldritch Invocation. Um. I might need to be a rat, my friend. It might, it might. Um, we have... What else do we have in here? Uh, we have a rare for re recharging warlock spell slots, but that's not really helpful to <laughs> anyone. Yeah. Uh, we have a rare ring for uh, punching an undead and then having it make a <laughs> wisdom saving throw to then uh, become under your control until it succeeds. <laughs> Like if anyone, that's probably more yeah, for Goma. It's a, it's a, it's, a it's Lady Maldorna's signet ring. You punch, <laughs> you punch a, a an undead, and you make a make a will save. Um, I can, I can make a hand gesture at an undead and make it explode. I mean, fair enough. That's a uh, pretty good magic item. I um, I also have a cloak that allows you to use alter self when in complete darkness. Uh, and I have a book that has a bunch of like spell effects attached to it. Wow, well, that's it. Oh. Hmm. None of them particularly useful to this party, I will admit. But... Yeah, <laughs> Just like I buy a healing potion. They're mostly warlock spells. To yeah, me. yeah. I'm gonna. I I think I found one in Tasha's that I used in the last game that I think would be fun to use at 14th level. Okay, okay. I used that the Eldritch Claw tattoo. I will. I will ask you. Ooh, I, I will ask you about what you've picked once we get to a point where everybody's feeling like they're comfy with their selections. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, in the meantime, I, I have chosen all my stuff. Okay, wonderful. Uh, in the meantime, let's uh, think about tokens for the characters because we may need to be on a battle map shortly. If you have any preferences for tokens assigned to your characters from the massive repository of tokens available to us on Roll Twenty. Uh, please, Roll20 marketplace. Go and please, get them. please let me know because we have the oh. I have the first encounter that I'm trying to set up. Uh, yeah. In the meantime, so if you if you ask me, I'm always gonna say Yuikami. I know you're gonna say Yuikami, so you just want like a Yuikami. That's so cute. Yeah, draw, draw one. I know there are a few. Uh, okay. Yeah. They're so cute. They are pretty cute. It's true. When I am GMing the thing, please expect to see them, unless the adventure already has them, which we'll probably do. Uh, uh, uh. For reference, 
you will not have access to this entire thing that Elf is showing. They are part it of is, the marketplace, it is but the we're marketplace. showing them off. Yeah. Okay. We have access to the whole thing. Yeah, we have the benefit of being unlocked, uh, un unlocked uh, marketplace. We can go into your campaigns and change your life. <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> I've done it before. Oh. I might switch something out because I thought it would be useful to me, but I don't think it is going to be useful to me anymore. Because I'm not a spellcaster. I don't so remember how to spell it. Yurikami properly, Dave. Uh, Y-U-I-K-A-M-I. Y-U-I-K-A-M-I. Is that it? I believe so. Which is the one that I can punch undead things with again? <laughs> Oh, that's Lady Maldorna's signet ring. This is the one we wrote. Um, it's not in any books yet because I I wrote it. Um, but you're welcome to use it if you want to. I'll uh, give you permission. Why the hell not? Okay, sweet. It's a rare, right? Uh, I believe so. Let me just quickly check. I closed the document because I didn't think anyone was going <laughs> to use use anything from it. Uh, hang on, let me. Well, I mean, I do so much punching. I might as well. well let me find yeah. test it. it out for let you. Me find it. I mean, you need to use an action to use it, right? Like, rather than just being part of your attack, but we'll, we'll figure it out. I have two attacks. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm just punch, punch, punch all day. Let's see. Punch, punch, no matter what. Here you go. This is this is the signet ring. I'm putting it in chat. Bam. It's called Lady Duthrain, the Duthrain family signet ring. It is rare and requires attunement. There you go. Okay, I will put it in my notes somewhere and figure out how to do the thing later. That's what it does. Um. Okay, back to what I was doing, which is getting tokens. <laughs> Yay! Yo, you can call me Drow. Let give me your you can call me Drow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the the back end parts of D and D that you erstwhile never see. Where we look for stuff show, and fix things. You can show the process of linking it to a character sheet as well. Uh yes I can. Show off. I sure I sure can't. Oh, this guy's this it is just... a per perfect edgy drow character. Um so we just go here, we represent it represents uh Serenel. Ba, 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 ba. Does anybody want to talk about uh what magic items they have or Serenel, sorry. Uh they have chosen uh, all together. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead. Yeah, all right, Ooh. all right. Yeah. Um, so as he's collecting his stuff, you see that he's he pulls out a. It looks pretty long. It looks like it should be a, a long sword, but with how tall and lanky he is, it kind of the equivalent of a short sword for his kind of length and height. Um, and it's a flame tongue um, short sword. It has some. Um, Ruins etched into that um, handle on the palm, pommel of the of the blade. I mean, of the um, blade, yeah. And on the blade itself, it's kind of like a almost like a deep, almost like blood orange. It's like made of some blood orange metal. You're not entirely sure what it is exactly. Um, and he's kind of sheaths that as he's getting his stuff ready. He pulls out a shield that has um, very similar runes um, and etchings inscribed into it. Um, that's going to be the plus one shield I took. Um, and the other item is not an item, it's a tattoo, and it's going to be, it's basically making it canon that he said he has a tattoo that he regrets. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> it's the Elder Claw tattoo. He regrets, he doesn't regret the Elder Claw tattoo itself, he regrets the placement, and he's never going to tell anyone where it is. Ah, I see. His other... <laughs> I see. It was just a one, one bad night, you know, a bit too much to drink, woke up in a place he didn't recognize. With a tattoo you did I remember getting. I mean, fair enough. Uh, okay, so those are Azul's magic items. Uh, does somebody else want to go? Uh, I picked up a robe of useful items. You know, because they're kids. So, you know, their mom wants to make sure that they're always equipped wherever they go. So they have, like, this robe that they wear. And it's sleeveless. It's not really a robe anymore. It's been turned... It looks a bit more like a gi, um, okay, and the, okay. it's it's more like a gi of useful items um, that they wear. Um, I like it. It's in their family colors, uh, and it's just you know a robe of useful items, just in case they ever get into any trouble. 
And they also have a potion of greater healing. Um, because you never know. You might you, be far yeah, from a you, cleric and you never you know. Might have to true. fend for yourself. Or perhaps yeah. your cleric gets taken out before they can do any healing, like a certain druid did. That that can and, definitely uh, happen. Yeah. That could never what? The healer getting taken out first? That's never happened That's, before. What, in any D D game? Yeah, never. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Certainly not in any D and D game yeah, I've played. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have a potion of greater healing, and then of course I have the ring. Wonderful. And last but not least, Dave. All right. What does um, what does Saranel have? So Saranel's gearing up. Oh, it's absolutely been a while. Um, <laughs> yeah. Put on, I think put on a bit of weight. So the old half plate is slightly less than half plate because a few of them have to be discarded you need the uh you need uh, the old you need the old breastplate stretcher yeah yeah absolutely like fine wizard elastic <laughs> um and and there is a matching shield which uh actually has a drow family crest on it cool um though it's attempted to be kind of covered over but since it's a magical shield um it's can't, been can't relatively really it. unsuccessful yeah. um picks up a broom from by the door um and then just kind of like lets it go um and it sort of floats in the air we got a flying broom Neat. um which just kind of picked up from working around cleaning things up days as a lower ranked scribe just been around a few too many magical items and now it flies for some reason and i just kept it because everyone was like yeah like kind of who cares um what are you gonna do reach a high stack actually that makes you more good at your job <laughs> um and finally oh it pains them to have to do this, it pains them. Mm -hmm. There's um, pulled out from a log box under the bed. <sighs> Dusty clearly hasn't been opened in hundreds of years. Um, click it open, sat on the little velvet thing. Is this ornate um, white gold encrusted with gems and adorned at the center with um, a huge moon, which has been um, filled with a really kind of gaudy looking uh, diamond and places it upon the head uh, because that is the plus two uh, <laughs> amulet of the devout. Um, but it's a Saloon one, and it's awful, and they hate it, but it makes their magic stronger, and they're going on an adventure, so I probably should <laughs> I do I mean, it. you know, you gotta, you, yeah. gotta, you gotta make your compromises, right? Yeah. It's just, like, completely out of place with the colouring of everything. It's like, oh! It shines with, like, a kind of small light. Um, so it's, like, a slightly awkward glare over the eyes the entire time because um, yeah we're a happy and blessed cleric happy and blessed yeah mm. <laughs> oh definitely good hashtag descriptors blessed. For you. <laughs> hashtag blessed just like mumbles the prayers and incantations in the morning it's like mm, by the light of the moonlight uh, I <laughs> reach the brightness of the starry sky and I, I don't know I thought for some reason I thought you were reciting you were say, the moon for yeah that's what I, I, was, I, I, I was expecting you to I was, say I, 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 I will getting, punish you I was, getting, I was getting ready <laughs> I was for I was getting ready for some yeah in the name of the moon uh, right <laughs> I was I, I realized I, I was going to say that for when we I can... cast the spell but like I accidentally <laughs> Oh, we can, it, we, we you know, we can give you a transformation sequence or whatever. It's fine. <laughs> you can throw your throw Full your on magical uh, girl transformation. Oh, yeah. oh my god, I should do that. You gotta. Oh, what you gotta that, throw what was that? What was that show where the? Yeah, what was the show where the guy was a? 
he accidentally became a magical girl. I don't with, like, know. Good. I know what and he had about, a chainsaw. Yeah. A, a chainsaw. magical girl chainsaw. Oh, what show was that? I need to look it Excuse up. Excuse me, did you just put the words magical girl and chainsaw yeah. in the same sentence? Yeah, yeah. I know I know what you're talking about. I can't remember it. Okay, well, that's wow. that's that's for another day. <laughs> <laughs> um wow. For now, the three of you, are, I suppose, are headed to Baldur's Gate, yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, you have a couple of days' worth of journey ahead of you. Um, the first... Soma keeps pestering uh, Azul for a piggyback ride. Oh, 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 okay, I suppose. If you, I guess if we'll keep you from... You're so much taller than I am, and like I can't keep up, and I'm so tired. Okay, it, it would be, be on very unhero like of me if I said no, and it's gonna like crouch down and like let go of my gun on his back. Just, I'm just absolutely miserable the entire time. I don't talk <laughs> very much, and I'm just like, mm, I hate it. <laughs> Isn't it's it so wonderful, Sharon? Look at that! Look at of you. Need to buy you a sun hat. I have one in my bag, but he, he, they stay, they're they sure that they don't want one. I've got to keep my tiara on. <laughs> you can put it on Why is the blessing going to fall off? You know, if it was that simple, then we would have invaded the surface world thousands of years ago, unfortunately. Oh. Maybe it is that simple. The real problem with invading the surface Maybe world. Nobody's tried it. The real, the real, the real problem with invading the surface world is the drow. Is that all your equipment turns to dust? <laughs> that's Not the ideal. That's, that's the real problem. The sunlight is a real, a real issue. Yeah. Um, but so the first day passes relatively uneventfully as you're like uh, progressing up the Swords Coast past these, you know, nice small little small towns and like you know inns and so forth uh, up the road. Um, this place has been like well patrolled by the the local Flaming Fist Mercenary Company, uh, and uh, is such not a very dangerous road to be traveling unless you happen to be wanted by the Flaming Fist Mercenary Company. Um, and uh, and you make your way, you know, for the first day, sort of to this good camping spot uh, off the side of the road where you'll be able to, you know, chill for for the night. Um, unless you want to press on, but that's up to you. I, uh, how is everyone feeling? I know, Goma, you've been on my back for most of it, so I hope you're still, yeah, you still have a bit of energy left Goma's in you. Goma's fine, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit thirsty, but otherwise I'm doing great. Uh, do you want me to, do you want me to prep some conjure for tomorrow? That would actually be very helpful, yes. It's good, it's very here, I like to make sure you're hydrated during your adventures. Dehydration is the silent killer. No, you're really? not wrong. I thought that was hard. <laughs> Dehydration is the work. Um, <laughs> I suppose it depends on what creature the farts are coming from, because I have definitely come across some some creatures who weaponize those the, the methane that leaves their body. Yeah, and the underdark ugh, and no ventilation. Yeah. Bad times. Sure. We'll get I you think... some food. We should definitely should get some rest, though. Sleep! I sleep. Any of you know any good time bedtime stories? I know I'm a little bit too old for them, but now and again, they're really comforting when I'm, like, really far from home and my entire family, and they don't know where I am. Oh, Is this your first adventure? No, it's not. It's just that I don't usually go without another family member. Oh, so this is your first time that where you wanted to understudy? Like The uh, Apprentice? I mean, I never was the understudy or the apprentice. Our well, family is very like uh, equitable. Like once you've reached like a certain level of skill, like they just treat you like you know, the same as everybody else. You're only you're only an apprentice for like the first couple of years of your training. Wait, I've been training for a long time since I was like five. Wait, how old are you? Thirteen. Oh. Okay, that's good. So you're old enough to be adventuring. Okay, I was worried for a second. That's when I, I started adventuring around when I was 12, 13 as well. Well, I was an apprentice and I technically still am the apprentice of my, my father. So that part was is news to me that, what's it like to be treated as an equal um, in my family? I mean, 
they 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 train all of us really well with the understanding that we might not be perfect and we may make mistakes sometimes but if we don't if we don't ever give uh if we're never given the opportunity to lead uh or or be in charge then we never really understand what it's like to like you know really survive there's only so much you know hand holding you can do that, that's very fair um well i apparently have been hmm All right, kids. Wait, Got a little kids. story. Oh. So once upon a time, there was a family of people who really didn't like their neighbors. Um, and they started playing pranks on each other, <laughs> you know, sending assassins. Um, oh, yeah, that's a good prank. I remember that one. Yeah. Uh, murdering their clerics. Oh, okay. Um, casting aspersions of their um, I, devotion um, to Lolf. Yeah, these are starting to sound a bit more than um, pranks. If I'm No, no, it's, it's great. It was fine. Um, and eventually the two families got together and they decided that they were gonna gonna uh, hash out their difficulties and they were gonna have a truce uh, and it was gonna be great. And they were gonna hold a lovely party and um, the daughter of the matriarch of one family was gonna marry uh, a powerful captain uh, of the other family. And then while they were all there, they were ambushed by a third family and totally wiped out with all of their lands going to that successful party. Mm. Um, the moral of this story is always watch your back and make sure that if you're scheming, that it's a secret scheme. Actually, I'm not really sure why that was a bedtime story. That yeah, uh, I don't think that doesn't sound much like a bedtime story. Trout society is really weird. <laughs> mm. I, I've been carrying Goma around, and as light as they seem to be, it's still rather taxing. So I think I don't need a story. I think I can actually head to bed quite easily, um, worn myself out. So I'm gonna do that. I'll go my tomorrow. I will tell you a bedtime story the next time you camp. But I don't think or, I can top that one. Or maybe, or maybe you know, I can tell a bedtime story. I'm pretty good at them too. But anyways, um, I'm this tree. I'm gonna sleep in the tree. Oh. Good night. Good. Good. Good Wait. Night. We're not taking watches. <laughs> Good night. Amateur hour. Well, I assume that you were going because you know because we can't. See, and so I thought you're gonna at least take the first. I mean, I'll do watch. I only need to sleep for four hours, but that still leaves one. Um, okay, I would say, should I take first watch then? Yeah, well, it's light. Okay, I'll take first watch. Good night. Good night. Okay, so watches happen. Uh, the, in the first hour, nothing happens. Uh, and then it is, of course, our draw cleric's turn. And oh, let me see. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so could you make a perception check for me, please, uh, Serena? Yeah, absolutely. I say. Let's go. It'd be great. Let's go, Nat twenty. Um, I have uh, observing. Is that just for passive? I don't know. Yeah, that's just for passive. Uh, so it's just a yeah. turn. Passive. What is your passive, by the way? Um, my passive would be twenty. Oh, that's okay. Here well, goes, I've got a twenty-six. Twenty-six, anyway. So you're uh, innately, you know, like acutely aware of some lumbering figures. 
of incredibly large size headed towards your camp. Uh, you can see their silhouettes in the darkness as they move uh, around, and you're pretty sure. Uh, why don't you give me an Arcana check? All right. Oh, I'm actually not trained in Arcana. Well, I guess I'm a cleric. What are these creatures? That's an 11. 11's okay. Uh, you can tell that they are Fomorians, and they have some kind of, uh, like, harness on them. Uh, as if they are being used as riding uh, animals. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they're approaching your camp in a very intentful manner. Um, okay, let's see. How do you want to do this? Morians don't... Alright, let's start it off as we mean to go on. Um, and I will cast... Are you waking up your friends, or...? It will wake them up. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, I'm going to cast Sunbeam. Um, okay. So a glowing mote of light will form in my hand that I don't really like looking at. Sorry about the open window noise. It's really yeah, hot. Yeah, no, no um, problem. And kind of as a warning shot, I don't fire it at them. I just fire this massive beam of um, like pure radiant light energy just towards them. But obviously, it's daylight, so hopefully it should um, alert my companions as well. Does it make a noise? Uh, it's no, it's just a huge bright flash, which normally wakes you up. Really wakes me up. <laughs> Light changes. The My light changing is that the light, a teenager. The light changing would not possibly change if I were asleep or not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> teenager not can to that. sleep through anything. No and way. Azul is just a tired person. <laughs> he wants to oh, sleep right. as long as he can. So he's okay. thinking out in, still. In which case, if that is not a thing that happens for other people, um, <laughs> I would probably just do the. Um, incantation for the casting really loudly okay all right so you okay. are trying to wake up your friends is what i'm hearing here yes I all would right love to. so huh? both of both of the wonderful friends of serenel the drow cleric please make me uh, uh some kind of perception check i guess <laughs> oh okay. perception. i'm such a decent okay all right no, no that's both yeah. they're both you're both good you like stir uh and now everybody roll initiative uh, what's yeah. up? Oh, <laughs> are we moving over to? Oh, I did. I should have clicked yeah, my. I have, my, my I, have token. A, I have a place for you. Don't worry. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah are we easy. not on the map yet? Wait, you you are now. No. Oh, there we you go. will see that your three tokens are at the top there. Uh, feel free to you know select whichever one it is that you want. Oh um, baby. Oh my goodness! So cute. Uh, Okay. This is adorable. What the hell? I love this. Man, so you, so so do we click? Of, should should we re-roll then? Sorry. Since we didn't click. Uh, yeah, if you could. Yeah, that'd be that'd be okay. wonderful. All right, I clicked mine, but I don't see the uh, initiative tracker. I'm, yeah, I'm I need to edit it. Oh, whoa! I rolled even worse. Okay. <laughs> you can edit it to be what you what you rolled the first oh, time. We did it. Okay. Oh, Detective Gizmo is it. still on here from last time. Hang on, I gotta clear it. <laughs> go again, go again. Ever present. Uh, once I once I remove all of these. Uh, okay, it's cleared. Uh, go again and and add whatever one. I don't really care. Creepers, uh, creepers, <laughs> which gets them. Ooh, I'm gonna keep that natural twenty if it's okay. Sure, I don't care. I'm definitely not keeping at nine. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Here it is. Look at this battle map. Got some big boys. Same big boys. Yeah, there's no battle map for this in the thing, so I just figured a white a white sheet of paper was. This, perfectly, this sure is a way to start an adventure. Perfectly isn't it? acceptable. Yeah. 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 I don't know if you noticed, but it's four oh, Fomorians okay. and then the four Wood Elf wizards riding them in like howda oh, style. Oh, uh, Okay. Well. Uh, Crap. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything is fine. This is all Everything fine. Everything is oh, fine. Whoa, that's a lot of nat 20s. That's, that's two nat 20s for initiative. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Uh, okay. okay. Well, uh, so, 
uh, I believe that leaves Goma to be our first our first turn. Sure. Uh, I am going to go ahead and move my full 55 feet of movement. Okay. Which I believe uh, still doesn't get me right up next to them. Yeah, no, I, I had them appear from a distance. All right, so I'm going to move my 55 feet, which I believe is to here. Um, and then I am going to uh, spend a key point for patient defense. Okay. Uh, next, it is a wood elven wizard. Uh, the wood elven wizard sitting atop the um, Fomorian shouts out to the group uh, and says something along the lines of, uh, in elvish, or actually in sylvan, but you somehow understand it, even if you didn't understand Sylvan before. You somehow understand the words. Um, yells uh, something like, We know you have it! Give it over! And then uh, and then blasts you with magic. Hang on. Oh, uh, great. Good. <laughs> let's do magic missile against uh, uh, our monk right up the front there. Yep, and I can't um, save against this. It just happened. So, magic missile. Uh, that's only one <laughs> magic missile. That is not enough magic missiles. This is a level 10 caster. Um, so, <laughs> that would be... I'm just doing my mage math because it hasn't done it for me. Um, that would be that, and that, and then that. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so that is choo, 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 choo. Yeah, 15, yeah 15 total damage to you <laughs> as a bunch of force missiles pew, 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 their way at you uh, it, is then, magic it is then another yeah, uh, another wood elf wizard's turn uh, and they're gonna cast um, they're gonna cast let's see I'm looking through spells how far is that 90 feet let's see uh, who's this Wood Elf Wizard? Is that Wizard? They're going to cast Avard's Black Tentacles on top of the other two. Oh, okay. um, so, Avard's Black Tentacles, bloop, is this spell. It did DC 14 dexterity saves, please, friends. Oh, that should be dex save. I should have that in the back. Oh, maybe not. Maybe, I, hope, I, mean, I, I mean, I hope so. Uh, Here we go. Oh, that's a Ooh, um I'm I have indomitable, and okay. how many uses is that? What does it do? I think it's two. Oh. I have two uses. If you do so, um, you can reroll so that you fail. Yeah, so I'm gonna use one. Might as well. And see if I get better. Eighteen core cool, cool, cool. So I saved. Okay, so it's a twenty foot square. So this square is is it? There you go. That's that's the that's the old that's the old Evards. Uh, by the way, uh, you take half if you succeed, um, okay. obviously, and you don't get restrained, which is the the key. The key yeah. <laughs> um. So. So that oh five then. So a creature that starts its turn in the area and is already restrained by the tentacles takes more damage, basically. Um. So. Ba here you go. I'll just broadcast it for you so you know what, what it does if you don't already. There you go. Um, And we will move on to Serenel. Serenel, it's your turn. Yay. Do, 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 do. Restrained, restrained. Okay, fantastic. Um, I think I can do what I want to do from here. Oh yeah, because you're res you're actually restrained on this. Um, yeah. You can use a strength or dex check to free yourself if you want, um, with a DC fourteen. Uh, but otherwise, you are stuck. And I believe restraint gives you disadvantage on like pretty much everything. It's great. I love it. Um, sorry, this is. Uh... <laughs> stepping into a 14th level no no there's a lot the I mean I, yeah, I, I mean I just opened up these wood elf wizards and I was like oh shit <laughs> they got a lot right. of stuff <laughs> I cast a spell magic on Nevard's black tentacles okay uh and Everett's is a level 4 spell so you do need to like roll 
right? Because it's like three or lower, it just it just goes. But I'll just cast it with a four. Yeah. Are you gonna yeah. just, yeah. You're just gonna you upcast okay. it? Then, All right. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to make sure you were upcasting it. Um, okay. Yep. So you, no. you just get out of magic, here. The Everds. It is gone. The tentacles get out of here. disappear. Uh, anything else? Uh, yeah, I'm also going to cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. And I'm going to cast... Uh, is, spiritual, is Spiritual Weapon a cantrip? No. Then you can't cast a second spell, even if it's a bonus action? Isn't that how it works? Oh my god, how do I play D&D? &D? Yeah, yeah, how do you, how do you play D&D? &D? That's a good question. Absolutely you're right. Um, I'm going to move within range. Uh, yep, I'm going to move over here. Okay. The first Fremorian lumbers forward. Uh, these these fellas are big, big old giants that look all knobbly and evil, basically. Um... And they have a movement of 30 feet, and they can do the three creature. Okay. So uh, it's going to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 to there. Uh, the Wood Elf Wizard is brought with it because it's riding the, the mm -hmm. Fomorian. Uh, and uh, it is going to not attack you, but it is going to stare balefully at you and try and evil eye you um, down down there, little, little dragonborn. Um, so could you, for me, make a DC 14 charisma save? Oh dear, sure. Boom, Wait. you make it. Okay, nothing seems to happen other than you get a little bit of psychic damage. So hang on while I roll that. Uh, so as the creature takes 66 or 68 psychic damage. So you take half of that, 20, half of 25, so 12, 12 total psychic damage. But you are now immune to the evil eye of the Fomorian, for you have resisted. That was 13? 12. Or 12. 12. Always rounds down. Uh, Azul, that makes it your turn. Yes. Um, just want to make sure I'm reading this right first. Okay. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to... Um, Azul wants these... Tentacles are dispelled, even though he was able to deftly dodge them. And he's gonna, <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna reach behind him and pull out um, his longbow. Yep. And as he pulls back, um, you see a frost come from his fingertips and spread across the arrow as he casts biting arrow. And it's gonna fire at, um, it's gonna fire at the one that's on at the wizard that is currently on. Could you the... link? Could you link biting arrow for me? I just don't know yes. what it is or what it does. You want to shoot at the wizard on the front for Morian there? Is that your plan? Or? Yeah. Okay. It is. It's uh, part of our own action. Just yesterday we finished attack. Okay, cool. I just wanted to know if it was part of an attack or, or what yeah. have you. I just wanted to check. Uh, okay. So yeah, he fire, pulls back and fires. Fire at the wizard. Yes. And um, hmm. how tall are these for Morians? For for uh, they're like 12 feet tall plus. Okay, so if the wizard fell off, they'll take falling damage, right? Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. Okay, I wanna, I wanna use my super superiority die and make this a trip attack to try and knock them off the back of this creature. Um, and so I need to roll first to hit to see if I've been hit. Yeah, but, you gotta um, roll twenty-seven. Roll the hit, <laughs> a twenty-seven hit. <laughs> um. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Also, let me see. Yeah. Uh, roll, your, roll your roll your damage okay, yeah. first for sure. Yeah. So that's the six piercing damage plus um, concussion. This. Uh, what was that? Oh, that's two hit. It was the same. Um, same thing. Though. It's one d six. Then at eleventh level, you get. 2d6 so it's 3d6 total yeah damage so 10 um so you've done 16 damage total is what i'm seeing yes and then my with my superiority die yep I believe that is a d10 mm -hmm. at this point I think um, so i'm just gonna roll a d10 and they have to make a strength save and throw to state 
Okay. Um, stop from falling what's, off. What's the DC? Oh god, that's awful. One damage. Um, the DC is. Uh, where is the DC at? Uh, three. Um, it totally fails. I mean, he probably <laughs> doesn't make it, but you should figure yeah. out where your DC is. Yeah. yeah I'm plus your strength mod. All your dead since you. Yeah. Uh, okay, so plus yeah. your proficiency what is, modifier. So what is the effect okay, here? 20, like it's twenty then. Huh? So um, what? So what's the effect? Like what is um, it? It gets um, the trip attack me means it falls prone. So my version will just add one to knock it off the back of this. I mean, it's riding the thing. Like it, falling prone wouldn't knock. Like if you were knocking it a square away or what have you, maybe. But okay. like I don't know if prone would do it. Um, um if you have like a push or whatever, we can substitute. Yeah, it. I do have push attack. I yeah. have a push. I don't think I don't think prone it. would knock it off because it's in like a howda, right? Like a like okay. A plat, like a platform on the back of the yeah. the beast. Um, but yeah, if you push it five feet back, it falls into the square I'm currently using to represent where it is, um, okay, yeah. and uh, takes a little bit of damage on the fall as well. And okay. yeah, I think that's pretty much it. If they use their reaction at any point, they take the as the frost coats over their body. If they take a reaction, they take another two d six damage if they use their reaction this time. Noted. And uh, that's the end of my turn because there's a spell, so it takes the whole action. Okay, Fomorian time. This Fomorian is going to um, march up to like here. And then uh, let me check my ranges. It's going to stare at you in the back there and you're going to make a charisma save for me. Oh, charisma is not great. Okay. Charisma, charisma, charisma. Believe Ooh, in you. Yeah, it's really not good. 14. Oh, it just makes it on the DC 14 oh. save. Very Ooh, close. Thank God. You do you do take some damage. Um yeah. because you take psychic damage, so it's half of seventeen, which would be eight psychic damage. Okay. As the Fomorian so stares balefully at you once again. Uh, who um, who are you looking at? <laughs> uh alright, it's Wood Elf Wizard time. It's wizard time. Uh and uh this wizard is going to cast Summon demon. <laughs> oh God! So he has oh, a. You are not making your life any easier. No, I love it. Uh, so he's gonna cast. He has this ability, and he's gonna with a fifty percent chance he can summon a shadow demon. That's it. That's all it does. So we're gonna roll a d one hundred. If he gets below fifty, it works. If it doesn't, he doesn't do anything. Here we go. Damn it! <laughs> oh, thank God. Wow, the 66 for some reason. Demon. For a demon yeah. as well, right? <laughs> All right, well... Hail Saturn. He he raises his arms in a dramatic gesture. Something starts happening, and then it fizzles like... Pfft, nothing happens. Uh... All right, next, Wood Elf. Let's do it again! <laughs> oh, God. Jesus Christ. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, those two have used up their demon summoning powers. This Fomorian is gonna walk up here and attack our uh, wonderful uh, monk. Oh no! Okay, I probably should go. Um, <laughs> so he attacks with a great club. Wamp, wamp. Mm. Uh, oh. I'm going see. to as a uh, reaction with my uh, my shield on that first attack. Add an additional. Three AC. It's not going to keep me from being attacked, but it will stay a three DC until the beginning of my next turn. So anything else that attacks me will have to deal with my AC okay. being. Uh, it will be twenty one from now on. Like I said, both of those still hit me, but and you pay a key point. You pay a key point to yep, do that. I right? pay. Yeah, key, I spend a key point to do that. Okay, so yeah. he great clubs the crap out of you. Um, it hurts. Oh, uh, oh. He deals thirty. 33 damage on the first one. Right, uh, and then 23 damage on the second. I am unconscious. Wamp. Womp. Wait, what? Yeah, what? I'm unconscious. I forgot I'm a fighter. I was like, wait, that's way too... Whoa. Okay. 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 HP is pretty low. Um, uh, What's the monk hit die? I think it's the eights. Tens. Yeah. Tens? Tens. Thanks, Tim. I th Oof. think it's eights, actually, but... 60, 63 yeah, is pretty I, low. I, I only had 60. Um, so. Oh, no. Uh, okay. okay, next Fomorian. Fomorian time. Oh, wait, I got to move the wizard up with that Fomorian. There we go. He's 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 chilling. 
first um, to go unconscious in this game too. Well, that's, oh, that's no. how it is. Oh, One, no. two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, Key, he can't go there. What was that again about me being the tank? He runs directly. <laughs> he, he just he just runs directly at at Sarinel and parks in front of Sarinel there with this wood elf. No, you're gonna be uh, such a perfect line. And then it is Goma's turn. Goma, death save, please. Twenty, twenty, twenty. Oh no, we can't. No. Okay, hold on. Okay, uh, one failure. Onwards. Uh, now it is Wood Elf Wizard's turn. Summon Demon time! Oh god, I forgot there's another one. There's two more! Yes! No. <laughs> I did it! FML. Now I have to look up a demon. Hang on one second. The last demon has been summoned, y'all. Shadow demon. Do I have something that can stop this? I don't know, do Let you? If check. you do, it would be good. I hope so. I don't. I don't think so. Let me just uh, check. This is the correct thing that I'm that I'm grabbing here. Uh... Yeah, no. Specifically, is lucky, and it's only when someone attacks me. It's not when just general rolls. God damn it! My mom's gonna be really mad. Yeah. It's gonna be fine. Honestly, I, I feel like at this point, I feel like maybe Goma told stories about their mum, and okay. I think Shadow Demon um, is a very is general. Scared of their it's a very yeah, it's a very general uh, uh, subject. Apparently, I can't just sort Shadow Demon and find out a demon. Apparently, uh, when a demon's body is destroyed, Shadow Demon, Shadow Demon. Shadow demon. Well, I want Shadow this. Demon. I want that. I want that one. Why? Why can I not have? Okay, it is incorporeal. All right, I have I have it, but I don't have a token yeah. for it. Um, okay, what does it live? Uh, it's got light sensitivity. It has shadow stealth, some claw stuff. Um, cool. Uh, let's keep that open, and then I will Everything's just fine. give me a demon. Everything token. is totally fine. <sighs> oh no. <laughs> I'm looking for the demon. Hang on one sec. Uh, we should wow. have another character. <laughs> we probably should have hidden instead of engaging. Well, oh, hmm. it's possible. I mean, it seemed like they knew where we were. Okay, here's yeah, the shadow demon. There it for is. Us. There it is. We did it. Uh, there are now two demons. Oh, there's not supposed them? to be two. There we go. I fixed it. Ooh, got scared for There's a second. one demon he summoned right here. Uh, and then I'm gonna uh, he he goes right after this wood elf, so I'm just gonna insert his initiative, uh, real quick. Uh, sorry. Vince, all fine. Side fine. side uh, effects of all of this. Uh, we're gonna put that right there. And here's 22. There we go. Okay, that guy went. Now it's Shadow Demon's turn. Shadow Demon's here. Shadow Demon uh, has 30 feet movement. Uh, so he's gonna go. Over there. Oh boy. And I'd love to see it. And attack Saranel with claws. Claw time. Hiya. Nope. Then he misses and that's his turn. Uh Great. Wood Elf Wizard! Shadow Demon? I mean Oh god damn it. I could. I don't think I you will. Could. I don't think I will this time, but uh, you know, it's, 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 it's it seems seems like a good thing. Um He's, for the whole family. Uh, he's gonna cast greater invisibility. Uh, on the Fomorian that he is riding. I will say that they fell off the Fomorian, didn't they? Because I knocked them off. That's the one I knocked off. Oh, right? you're right. Yeah, no, he's on the ground. Yeah. So he reaches forward and casts improved invisibility on the Fomorian that's in front of him. Then. Oh. Uh, you're fuck. correct. Hate you're it. correct. Um, unfortunately, this isn't as good a strategy as it would have been if he were still riding it, but. Uh, that's fine. So this from Orion, loses track of it. This, 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 this from Orion goes boop, and oh, that's the wrong layer. Uh, I put him on the map layer. Uh, there we go. This, <laughs> from Orion, this from Orion goes boop and disappears uh, into the into the nowhere land. Um, and Serenel, you're up. All right, sweet deal. Um. So, since I won't be moving out of its range, I can go nicely 
around to here. Uh, um, I don't think the Fomorians have reach, so... Do they not? No, no, they don't. They're huge! Yeah. And they don't have reach. Yeah, doesn't say they do. Hmm, so, okay. That's oh, no, it does, it does, actually. You're right. No, you're good. You're good. All right, they, they actually have a 15-foot reach, in fact. So. Oh, yeah, that's what I was counting yeah, on. No, you're good. Um, all right, so I believe... I have a nice line. I mean, that's a oh. relatively good line, yeah. Yeah. Passing through all these boys. Uh, so since Sunbeam is still up, um, I am going to bing, shoot through uh, all of them. Okay. The brilliant light flashing out, in five foot wide, sixty foot high. You want to link it or roll it or what have you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is the spell. Disc oh no, it just came <laughs> through as the. Uh, I can show it. That's storm. Just on a location you specify. That's a different spell. Oh, that is a different spell. A spell. Why? Okay. Yeah. Did you cast a different spell? No, there we go. Sunbeam. Uh, being brilliant, really flash through your hands. Each creature in the line must make a con. Okay, con saves. All right. Con saves, please, everybody. Uh, okay, hang on one second. Oh, 40 to oh I rolled the wrong. I understand yeah. why you were confused. Uh -huh, yeah, you rolled, the wrong, you rolled the incorrect spell, so I did not know. Um, uh, con save and con save and wood elves and con saves just for all of these lovely wood elves. Okay, so what's the DC that I'm trying to trying to hit here? Uh, twenty. Oh, okay. Nobody makes it then. Let me just click. Why is that linking to that Dawn? Is Dawn, that is still the wrong spell. I'm no, I'm, I'm literally clicking on oh. my sheet where oh. it says Dawn is like at the bottom because it's a fifth level spell. Um, okay. well, I mean, well, it's 68 radiant damage and blinded until next turn. You just do it, just do it. Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, manually, manual like, um, yeah. Ugh. That is a terrible roll. Uh, 17 points of damage and they're all blinded. Okay, cool. Ooh. Uh, so they're all they all fail, so they all take the damage and take the blind condition. Uh, until next turn. Yep, and then um, as my bone section, because that is not a spell, um, I'm going to cast mass healing word, targeting the three of us. Okay. It's not much, but you will be standing up again. Every little helps. Cast on the level. Mm, it's up cost it a little bit. Boom. Seven. I wasted a fourth level spell flaw on that. You know what? I will take it. I am on my feet. Healing well, it's is probably good. only going to be one fight today, so I'm just going to go. Well, just gonna can, go, just go I can out. Pretty much tell you this is a, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I've got a lot more damaging spells, but okay, this one's pretty cool. Blinds everybody I, for a, for a turn, though, like not yeah. not permanently or anything. Just stays on. Oh wait, okay, that's perfect. Okay, did it um, with the shadow demon having light sensitivity? Did it take extra damage? No. <laughs> uh, not as far as I'm aware, but I'm trying to update like every status effect on these nerds right now. Just no, it's, yeah, you're good. It's radiant damage, right? Yes. Yeah, then they did take extra damage. Love it. Okay. Uh, all right. So seven healing, cool. All right, good. Sarenel, that's your turn. Good, wonderful. Uh, invisible stomping from uh, an invisible Fomorian doing invisible stuff. Uh, happens uh, as it makes its way somewhere. Doing somewhere. <laughs> and then uh, immediately break. Wait, greater invisibility does greater invisibility doesn't break? break? Yeah, that's what I. That's what I thought. Oh no. Um, just gonna read that real quick, just so that I'm. Anything the target is carrying concentration up to a minute for that guy. Okay, cool. Uh, Serenel. Uh, you feel the power of a great club coming out of nowhere, uh, swinging at your head. Um, Not sure I like that. So, incoming Fomorian great club, 
Here it goes. I'm just like that. Wampity wamp. Uh, does a 22 hit you? Let me just check my reactions. Didn't yours use a bonus action to cast healing word? Oh no, not reaction. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I can only use it on other people. Uh, no, I'll just take damage. Okay. Uh, so you take 16 bludgeoning damage as an invisible club beans you <laughs> over the head. Uh, Ow. and then it is Azul's turn. Azul! Let me just yeah, make my no, call save. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that one. I'm real sorry about that. But Azul, as he's, um, he's gonna start running towards the Shadow Demon. Um, the one that was blinded. And as he's running, like, kind of yells to Serenal, like, Cover your eyes as he activates his flame tongue short sword and he kind of like clangs it against his shield and he's like ignites in flames as a cool light to just cast around. And he's gonna run straight. I think I have full movement. I could go movement that'll take me there. Yeah, yeah, you're easy. Good. So I'm gonna run right up to the shadow demon and then I'm gonna attack it. Yeah, with my flame yeah. tongue. Yeah, and hope that it hits. Um. One, I think I have three attacks, right? Oh, well, that's, two, I mean, that's one. It's a good start. Two, uh, three. Okay, so the first, the first wow. one, yeah, I mean, the first one and the third one hit, but like, roll damage. Okay, oh, um, did it roll uh, it? Yeah, so 12, because it went on the bottom of all your, your rolls. Um, yeah. So 12 plus 8 is 20, plus 7 is 27. Okay, so it lives through the first one, which means you need to use the second one to hit like hit it if you want okay. to kill it. Um, yeah, I'll that's, do that. that. That is what I was trying to determine before you like just threw everything at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it, it, it dies. Uh, awesome. You vanquish, you vanquish the Shattered Demon. It d d disappears in a cloud of smoke as you cleave your sword through it. Uh, um... And then I'm going to use action surge. Uh huh. Um, so I use twenty five feet. So I still got five. Another feet. Yeah. Five, and I get close enough to and hit then you them. An action surge to hit this guy. Yeah. It's yeah. blind as well. Remember, so it you is. Do oh, that's true. Advantage. It's blind. So that means I didn't have advantage on the sec. I mean, the, they wouldn't have hit. I mean, you did, like but it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't hit. I, I um, gave you the correct hits. Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, I can search means I can do all three of my attacks again, right? Or Correct. Just, or, you three. Okay, Take an cool. attack action, yes. Uh, so the first one misses, uh, I'm pretty sure. Let me just check 100%. No, Has it actually it, doesn't. Does it have advantage or? Yes, they, they have advantage. Oh, yeah, it hits. So, uh, they, all hit. so they actually all hit, yeah. And my third attack. Three. So, yeah. That's... Roll Rat. your damage. 17. 17. 34. Uh, slash into this. 49. 49 damage. Yep. Get wrecked. The Fomorian looks pissed. Man. And, and angry and blind. Uh, and that's the end of my turn. Cool. Uh, that makes it this Fomorian's turn. This Fomorian is blind. Uh, so. I mean. There's fighting going on, but I think it's just gonna take the dodge action and just like wait and see. It's defending its Early. it's defending its wizard. Um this uh let me remember to mark that so that I don't forget did this. Did I get to dodge did action. I? You had a death save. Yeah. Okay, okay. Death I didn't save. realize we were still Yes, still in it's, the yeah. it's been a Sorry long series of things. <laughs> A um, long, long list. So that'll be the dodge action, sure. Uh, then this Wood Elf Wizard. Let me check his spells real quick here. Uh, hmm. Hmm. He's gonna cast. He has some stuff. They're no ordinary Wood Elf Wizard. They are into dark magic. They're pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What spells can I do that will save me here or do anything here? I mean, it's very rare that you see Wood Elf Wizards as the, the antagonists in, in a story. Yeah. Uh, this That's guy... Yeah, I'm the, I'm the protagonist. I'm the drow. This, guy, <laughs> this Wood Elf Wizard is going to cast Cloud Kill uh, sure he is. on top of the two party members. Uh, Love to see that. Yeah. Um. So he's going to draw... 
a 20 foot square as before and just plonk a cloud kill right there um so each of you please make a constitution saving throw for me i'm considerably better at that archon archon i think i'm good 20. <laughs> oh it's a 20 foot radius sphere so it's actually like double that size but consider it to be in the other direction so it doesn't really matter yeah um 18. 18. Okay. Well, you just you, you made it. Um. So, uh, you take five d eight poison damage, or on a failed save, half as much. So we'll roll that. Uh, five d eight poison damage. Uh, so you take thirteen damage if you succeeded the save. Um, and then, uh, you're good because you passed the saving throw. Um, that's it. That's cool. Love it. That's that's the cloud kill. Uh, then this wood elf wizard is gonna cast greater invisibility. <laughs> oh god damn it! On on the Fomorian that they are riding, uh, and because it is riding it, it is also invisible because of the way invisibility works. Terrible. Anything that you touch, anything the target is wearing or carrying is invisible as long as it is on the target's person. It's not wearing or carrying. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's the wood elf. It's not carrying the, the wood elf. The wood elf is no. It's not carrying the fomorian. The fomorian, which is invisible, is carrying it on its back, which would make it invisible. It's casting invisibility on the fomorian, not on itself. I guess I that's how the encounter's the designed. I guess they thought it so, through. Okay. I mean, yeah, we're gonna hit these things if we can't. Okay, so if we try and hit something that's invisible, can we still? You can hit choose. It? You can choose a square to attack, and then at disadvantage, okay. and then at disadvantage, make an attack. Okay. Um. But yeah, like that's kind of how it works. But also, there's a bunch of spells that can remove invisibility. I don't know, fairy yeah. fire, uh, dispel magic. Uh, I've got. I've got some freaking uh, freaking a million different things. Yeah. You're level, you're level 14. I don't feel bad. <laughs> uh, I'm a fighter, so I'm just like, I don't get it. What am I supposed so to do? Like, <laughs> just keep hitting the thing. Just keep singing. Uh, invisible Fomorian is going to move uh, with Invisible Wizard. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm still on the ground. I still look unconscious. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Got your eyes. Don't open them, because otherwise they might attack you. I'm going to attack them as soon as I get the opportunity. Okay, yeah. so this Fomorian, you hear the sound of it stepping past you, uh, and then uh, uh, dear, dear um, uh, Azul, uh, you feel yeah. the rush of air past your ears as a great club, <laughs> an invisible great club swings its fucking self at you. Uh, let's see what we got. The, it can't Ooh. see us. We're in cloud kill. It's only, you're only lightly obscured. In cloud kill. It's heavily obscured. Is it? Yeah. Hey, let me check. Its area is heavily obscured. Uh... Oh yeah, you're right. Okay. Accidentally hit all the targets. No, that's <laughs> that's fine. I mean, the I could just I it. could just double tap the monk in front of me, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> if you really want to gloat about there being no targets. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I can't. You're not our adversary. You're you're facilitating your story. Uh, and then uh, this guy. I think that would just that would just cancel out the advantage. This guy, right? this guy is just gonna wait, and if you come out into visibility within his attack range, he will attack you. He's gonna ready a, ready an attack for you to to get out a cloud kill. Golden. Okay. Goma, yeah. your turn. All right. I will use half my movement to stand up. That still leaves me like twenty some odd feet of twenty feet of movement or something like that. Yeah, because it's I'm, what you have fifty five on a one action. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. I'm going to move up to this wood elf, and I'm gonna do a pop pop. Uh, you're gonna take an attack of opportunity, unfortunately. Um, cool. moving I'm out of use the threat my range. Reaction for that. Possibly Let me find which one it is. I think you might be able to do that one after you see if it hits you or not. Yeah, um, if it if it if it hits me, yeah, I have a I have a potential reaction I can use. Okay, so great club comes in twenty. It does. Okay. Wait, it doesn't because I have a uh, the beginning of my turn. Um, I have a twenty one AC. The beginning of your turn? Of, yeah, until the beginning of my next turn. 
but wasn't that the beginning of your next turn? Didn't did you yeah. did you use the thing or did I didn't. you? I did it. Never mind. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I get it. It's fine. I it hits me. No, you can you can use it as a reaction now to avoid being hit, but you don't have it from the last time you used it because right, right. you've mean, had turns as, since then. I might as well then use my turtle thing. I mean, if it doesn't get you on the ground that way, so... Yeah, that's fine. I'll take... Uh, it doesn't hit me. Okay, cool. Yeah, swings past you. Whiffs. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, you're, you're still... You're, an attack of opportunity? Yeah. I, I have... Hold on. Let me just make sure... Okay, cool. I can't do my other thing because I've already used the reaction. Cool. Uh, all right, I'm going to make my attack then. Okay. So yeah, two attacks against the wizard. Yeah, give me a second. Oh, okay, 15. 15. I don't know if that hits or not. Uh, the wizard is going to cast shield as a reaction. Cool. Um, but uh, yeah. And then swing around with the order staff. That hits. Four, seven damage. I'm going to cast a key point to do flurry of blows. And get two more attacks. Actually, no. I'm using a key point so that I can use He's... Steps of the Wind and get the hell out of there. Okay. Yeah. All right. But baby needs to do a heal. I'm gonna go over there. Okay. Wonderful. I think. Uh, that's my feet. The Wood Elf Wizard is uh, rubbing their forehead as you have bonked them with the quarter staff. Um, very surprised that you managed to get up in their face like that and then disappear so quickly. Um, this... Does it need to make the concentration checks for its greater and best? Oh, that's a good point. You're right. Uh, let's see here. So that's the real play. Uh, it doesn't. It it, yeah, it doesn't actually maintain its. Oh, so... here comes the Fomori. I was going zero. Con okay, I'm gonna keep that in mind. <laughs> I mean, they're wizards. What did you expect them to have? That's a good point that I think about. I don't play spellcasters, so I never uh, dump my con if I can avoid uh, it. So this Ramorian becomes visible oh. uh, in front of you. Um, this Wood Elf Wizard is blinded, so he's just going to stop. Oh, actually, he's on top of this Ramorian, so he's just going to hang out on top of the Ramorian, and he can't see anything anyway, so he can't really do anything. Um... This wood elf wizard is, hustles to get back close to his Fomorian friend uh, and then casts uh, tries to cast Witch Bolt uh, at um, uh, Saranel. Oh no, Saranel's uh, concealed at uh, Goma. Um, let's see. Wait, 30 feet. That's maybe not far enough. Oh, okay. It's we're, okay. In, we're in range. Uh, yeah. Witch Bolt, uh, 20, does a 20 hit? No, because you have uh, improved AC from your key thing, right? Until the start of your next turn? Okay. Get it, dodge. Dodge. Ooh. Uh, and then, Cernal, you're up. Right, sweet. Um, so does Cloud count? It, it won't double down, they never do. Uh, you want me to check? I can, I can take a look. Um, so no, when... it's we should have taken the damage when we started our turn inside the thing. Oh yeah, you're right. Which would be now. Yeah, you're right. Um, oh, do I want to? How how are you looking, Aki? How's how's going? I only on? have I only have seven hit points. Yeah, bloody, I, very bloody. I, the reason I the reason I ran away is so that I could take my potion of healing if I if if you need to do other things. Yeah, I got I got. A, just, I've got a spell to cost. There, there are a lot of things between me and and my turn and and your turn, but do what you got to do. Yeah. Um. So, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to cast Firestorm. Um, which okay. is a pretty cool spell. Yeah. Yeah. It's a DC twenty save. I can make um. 10 10 foot cubes so i'm basically going to you know attack all the way around here to encompass the invisible fomorian as well sure um yeah and then and the wizards obviously um and uh -huh. it's a dc 20 deck save or they take 
43 points of fire damage, and their carts are going to catch fire. All right. Seventh uh, level spells, baby. Yeah, spells get crazy. Uh, all right, let me let me see what I got here. Um, okay, Dex the creatures save. are no longer blind, by the way. Dex yeah, yeah, I got, I got you, I got you. Yeah. Uh, Dex save. Uh, Dex save, and then for the Fomorians. I will see the results in a second. I just can't do the multiple things at once with the way that stuff is laid out. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good. Uh, so I gotta just like roll all of these first. Well, this is. They this don't, is. They don't have a great deck, juicy. obviously. Everyone yeah. takes so they all, damage. So they all fail. Uh, a lot of stuff happens. So hang on one second. So the Fomorians all catch fire, uh, basically. Um, some of them look much less hurt than others. Uh, oh, they catch fire. The really only really super injured from Orion is this one. Um, the rest look like they're kind of dealing with it pretty okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was mostly the wizards and breaking Well, the and that's, you know, yeah. that's, that's fine. One of the, this wizard over here uh, dies. And Yay. this wizard here dies. And this wizard over here dies. <laughs> Oh god. What about the invisible <laughs> one? In uh I I mean we're gonna see in a second. I'm just checking. Uh no, he's he's alive, theoretically. Uh but but uh I gotta make a concentration save for his invisibility. Yeah. DC twenty one uh, because damage. Uh, uh he probably doesn't make it. He doesn't make it, so he's invisible again. Um Rest in pepperoni. Which puts him there with his Fermorian. Uh he looks pretty close to death. Um, but he's he's not dead. Um, oh, wait, is Cloud Kill gone now? Right. Uh, yeah, Cloud yeah. Kill is gone. Yeah. Ooh, um, okay. and then what was it? Uh, when the creatures of spells rest, uh, uh, failed save, seventy ten fire damage, half as much as the fire damage ignites flammable objects that aren't okay. All right, cool. Just checking. Uh, that there wasn't anything else I needed to do. Uh, good. So that's that's it. Yep. Um, and I'm gonna like slightly move away just to chill um, at the edge of the Fomorian's attack range. So <laughs> just it like might, a... Maybe he hits our fire instead. Mm -hmm. um, so this Fomorian you're moving out of the threat range of, and actually this Fomorian yeah. as well. That so was stupid. You're gonna take two. <laughs> you're gonna take two attacks of opportunity. Oh no! Uh, made a mistake. So mistakes were made today. Two These attacks. Seventeen and a twenty-two. Uh, uh, 22 does hit. Okay, cool. Oh, no, I'm going to use Warding Flare. Okay. I assume that makes it not hit you. I don't know it off, off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> sorry, I, I'm the, the list of abilities. I understand. Get. There's just like a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up, can't find where this thing is. <laughs> what is what? What is Flare? Do you know what Warding Flare does? Uh, yeah, it, pre it gives it um, disadvantage on the attack roll. But I guess you did already roll it, so yeah. Knowing not to I, use it doesn't seem fair. So I mean, I'll use up a use of it. Oh, okay. as if I didn't sure. know that the second one was going. I don't. I don't mind either way. You can just let it hit you too, like. Uh, yeah, we can. We'll, we'll take some damage. I don't, I don't really care. So it's 19 bludgeoning damage um, for one of them. Yeah, mistakes were made, but <laughs> it was unfortunate because it was a 15 foot reach, not a 10 foot. So you moved out of like two of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, f is that your turn, Dave? Sorry. I believe so. Yeah. Uh, for Morian's turn, for Morian's gonna swing at you, Sarnel, with the great club. Um, I hate it. Boom! Boom! Uh, let me see how much that was. Uh, 13, 15, no, no hits, I don't think. No, no. Uh, unlucky for him. Azul. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Azul is, I've just seen this, uh, these flames that Sarno summoned kind of looks at his sword at it's kind of like a torch in comparison. I think I think that that was the by the light of the moon. By the, by the light of the seventh level the, the, spell. The flames were like like white blue color. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> and I'm just looking at my like pale orange flames coming out my soul and it's like oh okay um I mean they're still useful and I'm going to cast um as he um swings at this um the uh what is his name thing Fomor- name again? Fomorian. This one. the Fomorian. Fomorian yeah yeah as he swings at the one right in front of him the one that's injured already they're He's they're done. they're Fomorians they don't want to miss out you know they have a fear oh god they have, <laughs> they have a fear of it <laughs> Um, oh god, that was actually a really good one. <laughs> yeah. Um, as he swings, he's gonna use his bonus action to cast um Hall Frost. Okay. Um, and his mate, his um sword, even though it's ignited in flames, like a rim around the flames has like a frost, a magical frost. Okay, you're just like full Todorokiing this shit yep. on me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're bringing on. Come on, roll your um, roll your dice. One, two, three. Okay, so one of those is a hit, unfortunately. How many oh, crit fails have you rolled? Well, um, and this is absurd. I he, don't know. He also rolled That's two weird. crits in one sequence. That is true as well. Yeah. Um. Um. Can I use lucky? I have the lucky feet. Uh. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Of course. So I'll just use the second, the second one sure. for the second to hit. Um. I probably should turn off. You have to roll. You have to roll again for lucky, though, right? You don't just get um, the. Oh yeah, yeah, I do. Roll. It's because it's like a. Yeah, I'll do that now then. Uh, there you go. Okay, it's a hit. Yeah. Um. So that's that, and that, uh, and then and then the frost damage. Yes. Uh, which is, I think, would be a total. So 19, 8 is 36. 36, yeah. Plus 16 52. is 52. Plus 52. 2 is 54. It's enough to kill this Fremorian. This Fremorian dies. Oh. Perfect. Um, I mean, you say it's not useful. You did more <laughs> damage than I did. On yeah. <laughs> true, true. Two hits. Yeah, you chop, um, you chop them down. Yeah, I think that's going to be the end of my turn. That's the end of my turn. Lumbering giant falls to the floor. Uh, that's the end of your turn. Yeah. Uh, I can see we're okay. No, we're good. We can finish this off. I think um, we can finish this fight. Well, yeah. I think maybe. we. I think we can maybe do it. I just um, burn all my highest levels. So this Fremorian, <laughs> this Fremorian is gonna roll up here and then uh, fight you, uh, Azul. Uh, Ooh, so okay. great club one Come two. Uh, we got both miss. two eighteens. Yeah, both misses. Uh, so my the shield. last the last wood elf wizard. Uh, casts fly on himself <laughs> and flies 60 feet into the air. Oh, 60 feet, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so he's just straight up from there, 60 feet, basically. Uh, we'll, we'll use an icon, it'll be this flexing because he's flexing. Because <laughs> he's, fle- <laughs> he's, he's flexing on you. Um, even though he's almost dead. Uh, this Fremorian will move up here and then attack you, Azul. Um, so let's see. Great club, great club. Ooh, the first uh, hits. And that's, yeah, 28 is a hit. Uh, so that'll be 23 damage as it womps you. Uh, and then, Goma, and then Goma, you're up. Cool. Give me just a second. I need to make sure I had that measurement right. Um, so... So wait, the one in front of me, My the one boy's I... boy's going to move here. Let me measure real fast. going to move here. You got a one attack, too. Uh, and uh, I'm going to throw some acid at, this, at, these, at these fuckers. Okay. So I'm going to use my breath weapon. Uh, that puts both of these two Fremorians in my sure. uh, 5 by 30 So they have to make dexterity saving throws. Okay, what's the DC? Uh, 15. They, they take both. 15 damage. Acid damage. Yep, they both take 15 acid damage. Blip. As you breathe acid across them. And I believe that is my action. Okay, Sarenal, your turn. Oh, with my bonus action, I will once again spend a key point for patient defense. Okay. I'm just trying to find things that hit both the Fomorians <laughs> and maybe 60 feet in the air. Um, <laughs> yeah, the Wood Elf Wizard is like, later! <laughs> oh my god, he's 60 feet in the air, right? Yeah, he is, yeah. I cast a spell magic on him. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> okay, 
okay, so he's like he's like escaping, and he's like, I'm gonna get away, you know, like all my friends are dead. <laughs> and then you just snap your fingers, and he falls, <laughs> and just fucking lands on top of the Fomorian and just dies. <laughs> like, God, that's genius. I love us all using yeah. four damage. He's- you thought, uh, bitch. He dies immediately. <laughs> the Fomorian just kind of scratches his head like, what the fuck was oh, that? What was that? Yep, yeah, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cast a uh, spiritual weapon. I, no, you're not going to do that because you just cast a spell magic. You can't Shit. do that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do... I don't know, I can't do anything else. On <laughs> Probably. Do I have any bonus action cash no, this sucks. <laughs> I say after doing a super cool thing. That's yeah. fine. I'll, I don't I don't really that. think it's a big deal if you can't do anything more than kill the flying man. <laughs> uh, Alright, it's the Fomorian's turn. The Fomorian's gonna swing their great club at Serenel. Here it comes. Bing bang boom. Well, I'm gonna boarding fly the first one. Okay, yeah, so it turns into a twelve. Uh and then uh, and then misses the other the other one. Azul, it's your turn, go! Yes. Ah, uh, wait. Sorry, I'm, I'm rushing us out. through the end of this yeah, fight. Yeah, no, you're good. Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm gonna. He's just gonna run to the nearest one. If he runs here, would he? Yes, he's still gonna be in range of everyone. Yeah, perfect. you're in range of all. There. You're in range of all of them. Uh, <laughs> so he's going to swing at this guy right here. Okay. And just bring it in. Do okay. what you can to bring it in. Roll fact, the dice. He's he's gonna cast Friendly. hex first, and then he's gonna attack. This okay. One. All right. Cool. <laughs> I'm stacking up all the damage. Um. Oh, that's Greg's character sheet. Wrong one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> go, Greg, go. Greg's would be two. very dead here, I think. Um, okay, so uh, th- two hits. Uh, okay. You've rolled four times. So that's two, two hits so far. Okay. Oh, my bad. Okay, I'll just do the first two that hit. Um, so this one. Uh, so that's 23. 23. Um, and then second the one? second one hit, right? Uh, it's 18, 41. 41. Yeah, 41. Uh, so he dies. The Fomorian oh, okay. dies. Um, and uh, you have two more Fomorians left. That's it. Okay. Well, I don't I, even I, keep my hex damage. Yeah, but okay. I assume I assume <laughs> I assume you move the hex over to the next guy, right? Like. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm, I have to use a bonus action to do that. I think. Yeah, so I'm do. gonna use yeah. my bonus action to do that next time. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so I I didn't bother with the hex damage because it wouldn't have been enough to kill it on one attack. But uh, you, okay. know, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that would make it this Fomorian's turn. This Fomorian is going to try and bean you. One, two. Uh, Azul. Oh, ooh, the first one definitely ooh, hits. Ooh, I like that. Like that. That is 22 plus ooh, 18. Ooh. That 40. is 40 damage. Does, 40. A, okay, does, a tw- does a 26 also hit you, uh, Azul, by the way? Yeah. It does? Cool. Another 18 on top of that, please. Okay. So I need to do a concentration saving throw. Oh yeah, hex. the hex. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably good because my concentration, my constitution is pretty high. Uh, oops. the first one is DC twenty. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh wow, because of the damage. I did not make the first damage. one. Yeah, I thought it was gonna at least roll higher than ten. Uh, so, yeah, no, 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 it's because it's like forty damage, right? So they the, the oh, check yeah, gets higher. Yeah. No, I thought um, my roll was gonna at least be ten because I have yeah. a ten constitution. Yeah. Oh, that's that's, that's unfortunate. Unfor- yeah, unfor- yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Goma. Oh wait, I'm going to use lucky. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, okay. I want to keep this. I need. I need it. Um. <laughs> All right, roll, roll it up. Did it help? There Did we go. There you go. You made yes. It. Ooh. Okay. And then make another one. <laughs> yeah, I'm making one. I just need to roll a hide in a one for that one. Well, I mean, one's still bad. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm good. Uh, Goma, Oof. you're up. Okay. Gonna move in. Gonna do some punches and hits. Gonna do some hits with my hits. Okay. Show me Hopefully them hits. Do some hits. A 19. 19 is a hit. Um... 22. 22 is also a hit, yeah. Gonna spend a key point for Flurry of Blows. That's what I figured, yeah. And. Ooh, nice. hell yeah. Ooh. I love that. Natural 20. And then. 37. 16. Yeah, 50 damage total. 50. Love that round number. Very nice. He's still up, unfortunately, but very nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and fire. then, oh, and... yeah, as my bonus action. Isn't Flare of Blows a bonus yeah, action? Yeah, Flare of Blows is a bonus it action. It is. Mm-hmm. I'm done. 
Okay, Cerno. All right, let's just keep nuking. We're gonna go for the old <laughs> flame strike. Okay, yeah, give him the give him the business. <laughs> Okay, uh, so DC 20, dexterity save. Does it hit both of them or just the one? It'll hit both. It's okay. a 10 foot radius. I, I just wasn't sure what so the... I can place it, so it doesn't matter. That's all, it's all good. It's all good. 26. Uh, so total. neither of them make the save, so yeah, 26 damage to both. They are both still conscious, still up, unfortunately. Uh, and it specifies in this fight, I was going to have them run away, but it specifies in this fight that nobody here will run away. <laughs> like, Oh, damn. Okay. I want that book. I want it. Uh, so, Fremorian turn. Fremorian is going to try and whack you back for hitting it with fire so bad. Uh, so I do the thing again. Great club, great club. Okay, oh, you do the geez. thing again. Um, right, 20, at least it wasn't a crit. 24 still hits you, I think. Yeah, for 20 damage. Uh, mm. And then the other one misses. Uh, and then it's Azul's turn. Azul, give yes. me the come yeah. on, give me give me the full business. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Kick yeah, his ass. Gonna use his, uh, which one does anyone? Can I tell which one looks bloodied? And, uh, oh, they both this bloodied? one looks like it's about to fall over any second now, and this one looks like it's about slightly less than half health. Okay, so I'm gonna go for this guy here, yeah. and I'm going to slash at this creature, and I'm gonna you know might as well burn my um uh, combat maneuver on this as well, and I'm gonna make this a um trip attack to try and knock it over the first strike okay uh, a... sure uh, <laughs> you're gonna try and tr yeah. wait whoa whoa wait 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 you can't trip a character that is two size categories larger than you Ooh, no way can I not? no way unless you have a specific feat there's no way oh no yeah because it's a large right you don't unless have you huge. don't have grappler you can't fucking yeah you can't fucking trip is it this huge? guy it's yeah huge, it's guessing, huge right? yeah it's damn huge. it okay um uh, in that case i'm going to go with distracting strike okay which I believe I can use. Yes, yeah, just bridge it out to attack damage. Yeah, and next just, attack. Just do it yeah. for the damage rules. Yeah, I'm just doing it for the damage, honestly. Yeah. Um. So, does that hit? That I... hits. Yes. Okay. Cool. Because I'm gonna do all the other attacks then. Because <laughs> the next attack gets advantage. Oh no, it has to make a save against that What's before the I get save? advantage. But, um, so 18. Uh. Oh, it does. It's not. A, it's not a save. It just does. I just get advantage on the next hit. All right. Um. There's no save to it. Um. That and that. They all hit. Uh, okay. Ooh, where is it? There it goes. So, that. 18, that, 21, that. 19, 21, 19 is 40, 18 is 58. Hex damage? Yes, three. That hex damage? Uh, so, what was I at? It's like uh, 70 to me. Uh, yeah, he's dead. Oh, okay. Um, 70 damage. That's, I guess I'm going to use the rest of my turn to move up to this one. And that's the end of my turn. Go, my go. <laughs> All right. Um, Finish it with your flurries. Yeah, punches. Give them the panch. That's 25. a hit. Going to spend a key point to make that a stunning strike. Um, <laughs> okay. That's boom. Uh, yeah. Uh, he makes a con save. A yeah. Saving throw. I believe the DC for me is 15. Uh, he has to make, makes a 19, unfortunately. Yep, we're gonna uh, do a... I think it's 20, but, yeah. Oh, is uh, it 20 for me? It might be 20. It doesn't, yeah. uh, it, it super doesn't matter. Kill him, please. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, I have advantage on all of the strikes. That sure, I yeah. After that. So let me, let me roll this one more time just to see if, you know, maybe I roll a natural 20. You can do it. Uh, I don't, but I do a 23, which I will take instead. It's the yeah. same, in, like, one extra damage. Uh, and then spending for a flurry of blows. Um, so let's do this again with advantage. Uh, 28 for 11. He's dead. And cool. I mean, just because it's fun. Just because, yeah. Punch in the uh, head. Yeah. 14, that wouldn't have hit, so it doesn't matter. It actually would have hit. Uh, they have oh, those. They have like they 14. They have 14 AC. Oh, yeah. It's a big boys. You but manage yeah, to clear. Did. You manage to clear. You managed to clear the field good, then it did. of of the Fomorians and the wizards, and I clicked the wrong button and took us to the wrong scene uh, there for a <laughs> second. But it's okay; we're not we're not gone yet. We will be soon. Um, and uh, once again, your campsite is quiet, save for the uh, smoldering of corpses uh, and uh, general d dis disruption of the the nearby everything. Um, and uh, you're left wondering where these guys came from and. What the mm. hell they were here oh, for? <laughs> um, and let's do our shout outs because <laughs> uh, we don't have that much time left. So let's speed through them. Let's speed run shout outs. Uh, 
Uh, Aki, you go first. Go, Aki. Hi, everybody. I'm Aki. You can find me on Twitter at Mixgenie in a Bottle. That's M X G I N I I N A A B O T T L E. My entire streaming schedule can be found on my personal channel, twitch.tv slash Shidari Aki. That's S H I E A R E A A K I. Um, please catch me tomorrow over on Indicate's uh, Twitch channel as I and my co host, uh, Colin Kelly, uh, guide you into the world of RP Game Changers where we play indie, uh, indie tabletop RPGs. Um, we're, we're starting our run with Business Wizards, which should be a lot of fun. Um, but yes, that's what I'm up to. Wonderful. Drac? Hi, uh, yes, I'm Drac for Draconics. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Draconics. That's D-R-A-K-O-N-I-Q-U-E-S. My whole schedule is pinned on there, but the only thing I really want to uh, shout out is that I'm going to be starting a, cobalt, uh, campaign, a mini campaign over on Cobalt Press tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm, gonna be, I'm playing through the Scarlet Citadel um, um, setting, which they recently kickstarted. I think, or is going into Kickstarter. I probably should have figured it out before I started <laughs> speaking. But um, yes, go watch that. It's a ton of fun. I'm very excited for the character I'm playing everyone's, everyone's bringing to the table. But other than that, yeah, I'm excited. I'm happy I got to play a fighter that did way too much damage. Hell yeah. Fight, <laughs> fight, fight, fighters are OP. That's what I know. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Uh, Dave? I'm not doing anything. The elf isn't going to shout out in her shout out. Okay, cool. Uh, Dave underscore the underscore human on Twitch. Twitter, I mean. Give me a bunch of follow. Yeah, <laughs> follow Dave. Uh, hi, I am Distracted Elf. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Distracted Elf or on Twitter at Distracted Elf. Usually I would shout out that we're doing Desperate Gamble over on the Roll20 stream, but we have moved homes for Desperate Gamble, and now Desperate Gamble content will be on twitch.tv slash Distracted Elf instead. Uh, so you can find that at my, my personal channel. Uh, for Thursdays and Fridays uh, at 1 p.m. PST. Thursdays being the GM streams, Fridays being the actual game. Yeah, season two, hype. Um, oh, oh, yeah. We might need to push it back one more week, but I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the, the moderator situation. Um, so we'll figure, we'll figure it out, and I'll let you know. Um, but so, yeah, that's the, that's, the, that's the situation. And if you like this and you thought... You know what? I would also like to move tokens on a completely white map and imagine a bunch of wizards riding uh, Fomorian uh, beasts or what have you. Then you to all... be fair, to be fair, the rest of it has oh, the rest of no, maps, the rest of it does. This was just like I needed an encounter. Dynamic lighting. They, they're really great. No, I'm just. just this is the meme. This is the meme, Dave. Come on, <laughs> you're interrupting the meme my meme. This is the meme section. Um, roll20.net for for playing D and D on the internet. Uh, it's free to sign up and you should check it out www.roll20.net and with that we will see you next week when Persephone will be back to introduce their character as well yay Can't and wait. Uh, we'll see you then bye nerds bye bye, bye. bye.